customers. Bonus bets back if your bet doesn't win. Find out more by visiting FanDuel.com slash 1620. 21 plus in present in Iowa. Refund issued is now withdrawable bonus bets, which expire seven days after receipt. Max refund $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. It's basketball time in Omaha. And when you're downtown for the games, be sure to stop into Cubby's Old Market at 13th and Jackson. Gear up for pre-parties, tailgates, or post-game. Cubby's has what you need. You'll find a full meat counter with steaks, burgers, chicken, and homemade broths. Hot and fresh deli food, including Chester's Chicken and Godfather's Pizza Express. Pop, water, beer, and a full liquor department. See you at Cubby's Old Market. Open 24 hours at 13th and Jackson. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop tickets for less.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. A crossover is. Crossover dribble. Same for the crossover. Kyrie Irving. Crossover in the lane. One of the most famous crossovers of all time. Behind the back, an ankle breaker on Chris Paul. Crossover. Crossover. Crossover continues to evolve. All right, Crossover is brought to you by Every Little Concrete Repair in Omaha at everlittleconcrete.com. Uh, we'll do this a little bit. This microphone sounds different. You sound great. Yeah. 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 That mic- good That's a good microphone. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Very good. Uh, we, uh, the Crossover is going to be a little bit different because uh, Matt Rule has started to speak in Lincoln. Just got back from Scotland. I know. We should ask him about his golf Anything game. happened while you were away? <laughs> Uh, Josh, whenever you're ready, we can bring him up. Yeah, so we'll just we'll just head out there for five minutes, do the Trev stuff, and then we'll come back. It's our team commitment week before we head into spring ball next week. Um, it's an exciting week for me personally. Um, uh, this Saturday, they you know I, they have the uh, admitted students day. Uh, my son Bryant um, coming to Nebraska in the fall. So uh, the commitment, you know, the sacrifice he's made to live apart from us for a year. Really excited to get him back and join all the other prospective uh, Huskers as they come here. So um, excited, excited for that. Just on a family note, obviously last week, uh, really sad to see Trev and Angie go. Um, more than just a great boss, I, you know, I consider Trev a friend. Uh, he'll be a friend of mine forever. Angie, uh, the way she reached out to Julie and has taken care of my family, I just think they're just class, class, class people. And I, you know, I wish them the best. This business is hard. Um, you know, people move from job to job. You build relationships, but uh, just really grateful for them and sad to see them go. Um, in the aftermath of that, just just been overwhelmed by the amount of people who uh, have really stepped up. Um, you know, Chris Kaborik serving in the you know interim president role, immediately just you know connecting with me and I'm sure with many other of the coaches and. I've only got to know Chris for a short amount of time. Oh, <laughs> I've only got to know Chris for a short amount of time, but uh, just been really, uh, really pl- surprised, not surprised, but pleased with just his level of professionalism and, and um, how, how quickly he's, he's responded to me. Grateful for Governor Pillen, you know, um, his leadership at a time like this, reaching out, um, you know, it's, uh, it's obviously difficult when you come here and the president leaves and the football coach leaves, but knowing, at the top of the state, you know, I know nothing political, just, you know, at the end of the day, we have a Husker there and that, that, that's meant a lot to me personally and really excited for Dennis LeBlanc. Um, he is, Dennis is what's great about college athletics. Uh, he cares about the student athlete. Um, he's, he, this is one of those jobs when you work in college athletics where you can, you can work a ton of hours or a few hours and uh, Dennis works a ton of hours because he cares about young people and he saved a lot of young people's lives. And so, I trust him, and uh, he's done an amazing job for us as our sport administrator, and uh, excited to see him. And I just, you know, co- you know, anytime you know Tom Osborne calls you or all the different donors and fans, you know, reached out. Uh, just really appreciative uh, of everybody um, th- through what could be seen as a tough time. But I mean, I, I think this is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Um, you know, everyone's going to wonder why Trev left, and that's his story to tell. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know why. I know he was very forthcoming with me and very forthright with me. And I have no complaints about the way he handled anything, at least with, you know, with me. So very grateful for him. But uh, this is an opportunity for us to to um, look at 
everything within our athletic department, everything within our, maybe even our university and how can we be better? Because um, this is an amazing place. And, uh, you know, I started off by talking about my son being here. I would not send my son here if I didn't think it was an amazing place. Um, you know, my wife's opening a business down in South Point. We would not invest our money and our, and our futures in a place that we did not believe in. We love the state of Nebraska. We love Lincoln. We love Omaha. We love, we love everyone, everywhere that we've been and everyone that we've met. And, um, I just think sometimes we, we, we forget some of those things. Um, we forget how great a place this is to raise our kids and we forget how great a place this is to live and, and to work and to, to be around. And so yeah, while it is a tough time losing someone of Trev's, you know, caliber, all I'll say is, you know, I believe you put 15 years in here in athletic administration and from everything I see in our athletic department, this is a well-run athletic department and this is, this is a good place. And, um, I know he's allowed me to do the things I think are necessary. So uh, he's left the place better than he's found it. And so I think it's an unbelievable, unbelievable opportunity for us to move forward. And the one thing Trev would always say to me is, um, and I think he took this really seriously as the Husker that he is. Um, he said to me, no, I'm, I'm only standing in this position as the athletic director at, at Nebraska. You're only standing in the position you're in because of the decisions that coaches like Tom Osborne and administrators made 20 years ago. Uh, to put us in this position where we're, you know, financially stable, we're secure, we have elite facilities, we have tremendous commitment. And the onus on Trev or and the, now the next AD, the onus on me and the, the coaches and leadership here is to make sure that 20 years from now we look back and we say, you know what, the people that guarded this place during this time were tremendous stewards of the university. And I, I, uh, I think that's really, really important. You know, we can't take a step backwards. We have to take a step forwards. And the thing that I'll say is, we have to be unabashed in our desire to be the best. Like we cannot worry about optics. We cannot worry about what people say. The way you win in college athletics today is you invest. And I, I can't think of a state that should, that knows that better than this amazing state, whether it's all the amazing financial institutions, you know, people all across the world, you know, try to read about the people in Omaha and Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway. I mean, you don't get a return until you've invested. Um, you know, all, all the agriculture across our state, you don't, you don't, you don't get a harvest unless you've invested, unless you sowed seed and, and watered it. And so um, whether it's salaries, whether it's facilities, whether it's upgrades, wh whatever it is, um, we need to return to the days where everybody across the country is coming to the University of Nebraska to see how things are being done. Now, I, I called Kirby Smart last week and asked him if I could come down and visit Georgia. We sent our, our, our performance nutrition people down to see Florida and Alabama. I want people coming here. You know, when, when Julie was the head dietitian at Temple and she was putting together a training table, she studied Nebraska. And so um, that to me is the place that we're at. And, you know, I, I usually don't read a lot, but I've been reading because you kind of hear what people, people are saying and um, – we don't have major problems. We have an unbelievable athletic department. Uh, we have an unbelievable opportunity, but we must, we must have vision for the future for 20 years from now. And that's what Trev had. Make no mistake. Trev spent the last year trying to tell everybody, Hey guys, revenue sharing is coming. <laughs> like we have to have a plan for revenue sharing when $20 million is probably going to be going to the athletes at some point here. And, you know, I don't know if any, anyone really listened. I don't know if I really listened. And all of a sudden now those, those, those lawsuits are starting to come to fruition and it's like, Oh, what Trev was right. And so we're going to have to, we're going to have to do, you know, think of things differently. And so as he now leaves and as he transitions, that's what has to happen here. We have to have amazing leadership that is saying to themselves, um, hey, what's the next 20 years going to be like? And how do we make sure that the University of Nebraska athletics is relevant in all of that? And that doesn't preclude the university, right? Um, you know, it, it's such a hard time in, in college athletics because college athletics is big, 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 big business. And if you look at the business, the University of Nebraska Athletics is one of the best businesses in college athletics. It has the least debt. We don't take student fees. We don't take money from the university where most schools, even in our conference, are doing that. So we have a tremendous financial model. I think we have to have a ton of vision moving forward to get to that. So I don't think the issues that maybe everyone's thinking are out there. I don't, I don't know if they're out there. I don't think that they're out there. I think that we're just on the precipice of a really, really important time to get the right leadership in here. Who's not worried about making tough decisions. Who's not worried about investing. Who's not worried about, man, what are people going to say if we hire a few more people? Like th this is the time. And it's not just about, it's not just about who we hire. It's about who we retain. And we have to retain that leadership. We have to retain our student athletes. We have to, 
we have to be the model of that across the country because that's what Tom Osborne and that's what Bob Devaney and that's what the, they, they built the best player development university in the country. And you can't develop people if you don't retain people. And so that to me is the place where we're at. I'm just so grateful for Trev and Angie, but I'm also really excited about the future and grateful for, for Governor Pillen and Chris Kaborik and everybody else that's, that's reached out to us at this time. And so, um, I think when you look at our university right now and you start talking about, you know, hey, are we relevant? Obviously, we're always going to be relevant here, but I'm, I'm really grateful for our winter sports and how relevant they're making us across the country. You know, because when I when I fly to Miami to recruit, you know, everyone's not only just talking about Nebraska, they're talking about Alabama and Georgia and Texas A&M and Texas and Miami. And so when you have your men's team doing what they did, when you have your women's team doing what they're doing, when you have our, our wrestling team doing what they're doing, um, it makes us relevant and it makes us part of the conversation. And, and um, on a personal note, the relationship I have with Mark Manning and, you know, the trust to work together with Nash Utmacher has been unbelievable as a proud girl dad, you know, of two, two daughters, you know, uh, you know, 11 and eight, you know, how many, how many games we've been able to go watch and I'm out there in the driveway and, you know, I'm, 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 I'm shoot, throwing him the ball and I'm saying like jazz Shelley as Leona shoots and Markowski backs him down as Vivi takes him down and backs me down. I mean, them for them to have role models like that, you know, like our women's volleyball team and women's tennis team. I mean, just, just amazing, not just the winning, but the amazing experiences. I mean, go, watching us go head toe to toe with Iowa at home and watching Jazz Shelley get up and make four free throws with the game on the line and being able to talk to my daughters about that afterwards, just amazing moments that are awesome to be a part of, but also relevant nationally. And then to watch our men's team, you know, to, to think about how much joy, you know, Casey Tomonaga has brought <laughs> in just my family in the last year to think about how hard Josiah Alec plays to think about, you know, the pain and passion on Juwan Gary's face the other night to think about, you know, Sam Hoiberg out there diving for balls. I just think it's an amazing time. And so I want to spend today um, talking that obviously I know you guys asked me about Trev and the future of that, but there's so much that's right. And there's so much that's good. And, you know, I've gotten kind of frustrated in the last couple of days as national people have called me and, you know, Hey, what's your contract situation? Like and I'm here. And I'm all in and Julie's all in. And yeah, I, I loved Ted Carter. I love Trev and I came because of them, but I came to be at the university of Nebraska and I've loved the people that I've met and we're not going anywhere um, unless you guys kick us out. And so I just want to make sure that, that, that I spend my time talking about everything that is right. And the last part of that is our team. Um, this team has come so far in these eight weeks. I mean, the problems that existed last year aren't the problems now. And the team's adjusting to me because I'm becoming a different coach rule and we're getting a different Tony White now because we're going to give our players the gift of high expectations. Um, we snuck up maybe on people sometimes this year, like, oh, the Huskers. Well, they're going to be ready for us next year. They're going to be ready for the 3-3-5. Three, three, they're going to be ready for, you know, the players that we have. And so we are pushing them and driving them. And what I love is they're accepting it and they're sprinting and they're running and they're working. And this is going to be an unbelievably competitive spring ball. If we've done one thing well, we've put a lot of talent on the roster and um, I'm really, really proud of them. And I don't tell them that very often, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not a fuzzy feely type of a coach. So it's important that they hear it. I'm, I'm proud of them. And the thing that, you know, the thing that separates the good from the great in, in I believe in today's generation is their ability to handle frustration. You know, like think about when we were young and, and there was nothing to do and parents would let us watch TV. We'd, we'd go, go do something, right? Where our, our kids, they're, they're on an iPad nowadays. They're, they're on their phone. They're doing something. And there's just not a lot of frustration in their everyday lives. And so can we handle frustration? Can we handle it when our coach is really getting on our nerves? Can we handle it when the stakes are high? Can we handle it when we have to do something we really don't want to do? The team keeps answering that. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to push them like crazy and, uh, in a swing ball and see where we end up. So, and that was long, forgive me, but uh, hopefully there's something good there. Coach, how did you, how'd you find out? About that? He called me. Yeah, he called me. I was, uh, I was, uh, my, my son and I, um, we did our first ever father son trip. He had his spring break was the same time as our spring break here. Uh, my daughter's spring break was different. So um, my son and I, you know, we we're, were actually playing golf and uh, uh, Trevor called me, but he, you know, he had talked to me leading up to this, you know, Trev, Trev's a good athletic director. He'd had many people come after him. And so one thing, he, he was always pretty transparent with me. And um, I wanted him to stay, but understood when he left. Were you surprised then? Um, 
Uh, yeah, probably. I probably had, I thought like, you know, I, well, I knew it was reality. I, I was you're probably caught, caught a little bit like, oh, wow, this actually happened, <laughs> you know. And, uh, you know, obviously I was uh, I was sad, um, you know, because I've really, really enjoyed working with him. What kind of leader do you, do you like to work with in that athletic department, that personality traits, things like that, not names, but just yeah. you know, qualities? Yeah, I, I, I really want somebody who's, who, who has unbelievable urgency. This is like one of the most pivotal. We, we, we spend a lot of time talking about like the transfer portal and NIL. This is one of the most pivotal times in college athletics. And the, I, we just need doers. You know what I mean? We need doers. We need people who just figure it out and work. And so, um, you know, I love the fact in Trev that I had an athletic director that was here, you know, at seven o'clock, seven thirty every morning in a suit and tie, you know, like he was a worker. Uh, Pat Kraft, who I worked with it. Temple's now at Penn State was a worker. You know, they were right there with you. So I, I think w- what we need is somebody that's going to come in and just get things done. Um, and again, they they have to be really mentally strong because when you come to a place that has as big a brand as Nebraska that people are so passionate about and care about, when you do something, a lot of people are going to like it. Some people aren't going to like it. And if you're listening to the outside noise, you have no chance. So I'm just hoping that it's somebody that's a, a worker, a doer. And I also want someone... Sam, that's going to go fight. Okay. Go fight in the, in the, in the committees, in the NCAA to go, to go fight in the big 10. Like I can say, cause I'm the football coach. I'm mad. We're playing Texas A&M both games. Cause now the games are about the AD leaving. It's not about our players. Our players deserve it. The games to be about us. And so, you know, I think having somebody, somebody that's not going to just go quietly into the night, that's a doer. That's a worker. I think that's what we need to really take what we have and, and get it on overdrive. How do you, what's your, what's your level of, Okay. That's pretty good. That's a good morning sermon. Yeah, it was, uh, what do we go? Uh, 13 minute rift? Yeah. Without a question. Longest uh, since he uh, became the head coach? Here. Yeah, I think so. I think mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah. He hit all the uh, typical uh, Matt Rule notes. I like his. Um... I like his vibe, you know, yep. he's, he's projecting confidence. He's projecting that, you know, every, everything is good. And, and this is, this is going well. Um, and I, I mean, you know, we'll see what they, what they get in terms of an athletic director. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see which direction they go with that. Well, I'm glad he was asked, uh, when he was notified because that had been, uh, something that had been spoken about this weekend that, that rule did not find out directly from Trev. And somebody said that to me and I said, man, they have a really, really good yeah, relationship. That doesn't seem right. I can't believe that Trev would not inform or at least keep Matt rule updated on what's going on. And that clearly was the case that through the whole process, he let his head football coach know what was going on, but he said all the right things and he's right. Um, one guy is going to be introduced uh, somewhere else today and the place that he was has to move forward. He also did something that you very rarely get with coaches and, and we have, we've not had as many or good orators as the football coach here that can stand in front of a media group and just go off for, you know, 10 minutes, but it's not going off in an angry moment, but that references other sports as much as he does. Like he's a fan. He is. I mean, that's uh, it's he, clear. He's a, he's a fan of sports at Nebraska and you don't usually get that, but he just rattled off jazz Shelley Markowski. And then he started to go through the men's basketball roster. Yeah. No notes, you know. Yeah. That's that, that's just who he is for sure. I, I'm I'm interested in the idea what he kind of touched on there at the end, um, in in kind of the person that he wants to work with, or the type of person that he wants to work with as an athletic director. Um, you know, someone who will someone who will fight for Nebraska yes. in those situations on committees and and things like that. It's a it's a big job at an important time, and Nebraska is trying to figure out, you know, how do you. How do you position yourself so you're one of the schools that doesn't get left behind in this, like in the changing world that we're in? Um, and that's important. That's that's super important. So it's a it's a it's a big deal. But it sounds like they have a pretty good idea. Well, I don't, he's not making the hire, but he certainly has a say in it. It sounds like he has a pretty good idea of okay, this is this is the type of person that that works here. And uh, I mean, to be fair, they had that. Yeah, they had that, and they don't have it anymore. Well, and it, he brought up the governor. He brought up the interim president uh, of reaching out to him. Just shows you that they value Matt Rule, not only who he is, but also his importance right now of some stability in the power chair. He did, in kind of Matt Rule way, 
did sound angry about national media that have contacted yeah. him about his contract. <laughs> yeah. Now you got to remember he was just in Scotland. So he's getting text messages, you know, six hours <laughs> later than what it is over here. And I'm sure that really, really pleased him. <laughs> yeah. Seems like it. Seems he like it he really said all the right happy. things. And then there are fans that are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, you can't say that. You cannot say anything nice about Trev and Angie. That's not the case. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, do you think that uh but do you, he, he do you think that smoothed things over? I mean, because it's been it's been red hot still burning throughout the weekend with, with as as Trev continues to tweet through it. Tweet know? through it, and I will tell you where the anger went another step is a lot of people, I mean lots, got the mailer either on yes. Friday or Saturday. I got mine on Saturday. And once I saw it, I didn't need to look at, I mean, I knew exactly what it was. People got more angry because that's not like they just put that together on Monday and then sent it out. That was something that was planned to do the bulk mailing. Well, you had one foot out the door. It just added to the anger. And then you top off yesterday. And then Matt Rule stops by and says, just like Paul Harvey said, God, in a a nice calming voice. And probably people forget, did he just say that he likes where his team is after eight weeks of foot, of, <laughs> of winter conditioning? Yeah, watch out. Yeah. But I'm not thinking about football today. No, no, um, no. Because along, I have a bracket in my hand. Came along at the right time. So so uh, I got this question uh, right at the end of our show telling people that we were going to carry this. This was already previously scheduled. So the memo came out on Tuesday that he was going to speak today because a majority of the Nebraska media will be gone covering basketball later in the week. And so they wanted to get it done before spring football starts on Sunday. So it's not yeah, like it's a busy Rule is, the only Rule time is back from Scotland and he's like, I need to talk about this, Keith. Assemble the media. I mean, it does it does work yes. like that a little bit because he's kind of the, the voice in the face of the entire athletic department at the moment. But y- yes, it, timing-wise, it also coincidentally works out. So really well. thank you for letting us do some football. Now back to basketball. Anyway, on basketball. <laughs> What do you think about uh, the Big East only getting three teams in? So let me <laughs> I didn't get a chance to get to this. Um, I think a little bit of it is the ACC had a, had a louder voice in the committee room because why does the ACC have that many in? Why is Virginia in the tournament? Why is uh, Virginia in the tournament? Okay, so who let them in? But I also think that I the, thought we banned them years ago. So I think for the, their garbage style of basketball, <laughs> the Big East also kind of did it to themselves because of DePaul, because of Georgetown, because of Villanova. And then Seton Hall, you have a net like that, and you already know you're in dangerous territory, don't lose in the first round. Yeah. St. John's got hurt by Villanova. So St. John's was the one that you go, hmm. But right on the opposite Vill- side of the card, I mean, St. John's made a run to the semifinal, and like they you know, so they didn't lose in the first game. <laughs> they they but beat I, Seton but, Hall. But they beat I think, a bubble team. I think just like Providence... All of them have four quad four wins, and they're from their own conference. DePaul and Georgetown at the bottom did not help. No. Now, nobody lost to them, oh. but they did not help you inside of your own conference. And so even with two wins on your resume against Creighton, you couldn't overcome a hiccup in the non-conference, or you have four wins over Georgetown and DePaul. And I think that also factored in. But the voice wasn't loud for the Big East. I mean – it doesn't have much representation, uh, no. The the fact that they only got three, I, you could make a case for four and you'd be like, well, that still seems to be under, but at least they got four. Who was going to bat for the Big East compared to the Mountain West? Six. Six. Now, do you buy into the theory that CBS has Mountain West rights? Uh, no, but I do, have a, I do have a conspiracy brain theory. You should let for, it go. For today. Uh, yeah. Let it rip. I like it. So there's a bunch of Obviously, there was bid stealers. Saturday was a wild day, um, and it and it we were we were seeing it come out later that night that like, hey, this is going to be really hard for mm-hmm. for the bubble teams. Does it make a, maybe a little sense that everybody in that realm of college sports right now is saying, hey, we need to expand the tournament, we need to expand the tournament, and here we sit with the bubble as competitive as it's ever been, with mm-hmm. a whole bunch of good teams, including three Big East teams, being left on the mantle during the NCAA tournament selection, maybe this further proves their point that the NCAA tournament should be expanded. Uh, I heard Greg McDermott talk about it last night. Greg McDermott is as old school as it gets. And he's like, I think everybody should, I I want people to be included in this thing. 
I wonder who's going to stand in front of the uh, Escalade of uh, Greg Sankey's driving. <laughs> well, well, this is a, this, but isn't this an overreaction? We haven't had, we haven't had a, a conference championship tournament weekend like we've had in a long time. We haven't had the, just the bid stealers come out of nowhere because you could really only had three over the last two years that made a difference on the weekend. Not like this weekend. So all of a sudden we're going to, we're going to overreact and the notion that is out there expand. Let's just, yes, let's we always overreact. We always overreact. I hate Remember that. when they changed the NFL playoff overtime rules okay. all because Josh Allen didn't get the ball one time. That happened. You know what expansion gives us? It gives us Villanova in our tournament. We don't need Villanova in our tournament. Villanova is not a tournament team. We do not which, need Villanova. Which, by the way, the odd NIT seeding, Villanova is a one and Providence is a three. Amazing. <laughs> I mean, that and they was, do have some weird seeding in the NIT. But That's a la Nebraska on. getting a five seed at the NIT a couple of years, or, you know, yeah. 2018 when they won 20 plus games. No, we do not need Villanova in the tournament. That, that much is for sure. But um, we, had, we had some good teams that were that were left at home and we had some teams that got in that weren't even on the, I mean, Virginia wasn't really, a, it didn't appear mm. to be really threatening for the field by most of the bracketologists. FAU got an eight seed and they got it. I, I said, FAU got an eight seed because they went to the final four last see, year. I said, Mi- I said, Michigan state and FAU either got in or got a good seed because of reputation. Of course. I mean, that's, that's exactly it. Right. And then we have lo and, have lo and behold, we're saying FAU has a reputation. FAU has a reputation. You make one run of the final four. It carries water for, for at least a year. Uh, when do you leave for Pittsburgh? Uh, Wednesday morning. Nice. Yeah. So Josh might uh, be holding down the fort here on. On Wednesday. I'm available if needed. Josh is Josh is trying to Josh is trying to work himself down to. Walking in Memphis because he loves Nebraska basketball so much. I love this team. Hey, I loved them all year. Josh and I did, did the uh, halftime show Friday night. Yeah, Nebraska where were you? Why were you in the dark? Where? I wasn't in the dark. Yes, I was in the backyard. You were, you were in the dark. I was in the backyard. I was going to be in the hot tub, but the hot tub needs to be drained. Okay. But we so turned the hot tub on. Outside? Wasn't it cold? No, not really. Okay. So I, I was remember. sitting outside and Josh Days and I were uh, rifting about... Uh, Oops, Nebraska basketball. And all of a sudden Josh had like positive notes and he was smiling. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to get a sandwich. I'm going to get a sandwich with French fries on top of it. French fries. in it. I'm going to probably take a PNC park tour. You should. It's a beautiful place. I've never been. So then you can go to Heinz field because Heinz field is across kind of the parking lot. The, the Allegheny, the, you know, that big yellow bridge. Hey, I see Justin Fields. I love. Oh yes. I love Russell Wilson for a year. It's different. It's a steel town. So, a lot of the stuff is a little bit older, but I really like like the Strip District, the North Side, um, that side of the river where PNC and and Heinz Field is. Downtown is actually really really nice. the The arena where now the Penguins play because they tore down, they blew up the igloo to build PNC uh, or PNG is really really nice. So yeah. it's actually down the street from Duquesne University. Yeah, I know it's right there. Yeah, yeah. I, I noticed that on the. But so, it, so it, Duquesne's it, hosting the the Creighton you know yeah. bracket in. Creighton's hosting the Duquesne bracket, which is great. By the way, how do you feel about uh, how it turned out for our lovely locals here in Omaha, Nebraska? They started to unveil that bracket, and it said BYU, Duquesne, Illinois, Moorhead State. And I thought, uh-oh, what's going to happen here? Well, and, then they, and then it got local. Oh, so It got local. So I think BYU cost themselves a seed because they can't play on Sunday. Probably. Yeah. So they're coming here. And the notion is when BU, BYU fans travel, they bring $20 and they leave a change. <laughs> so I don't know how many fans they will be. Helps but, the but, economy. But, but fortunately, Hurts nobody. there's going to be a ton of Iowa State fans here. And they're going to uh, drink our bush light. They're going to party in our town because, you know, I, Drake I, can go I, a little bit. The, I think South the, Dakota State can go the, a little bit. I think bit. the state of Iowa has a drinking culture and that's okay. I. They like to party in Ames. I they mean, do. They're coach rest, used to. Rest in, yeah, that's true. Why would you not? Rest tr- in peace, Visha. I used to always go to Visha. What's a Visha? It was a, a celebration in the spring. Um, that oh, turned, that Vaisha. turned. Vaisha. Vaisha. Is that, no, the Visha Festival. That's at Iowa State, right? That's yes. That's their like St. Patrick's yeah, Day. And then yeah, uh, yeah. they had a lot of violence and a lot of debauchery, so they cut it down. So one thing you can do at Iowa State that was almost a, uh, a draw to me going to school there is I was told, because it's a wet campus, mm. that every dorm floor gets to have one keg party a year. Oh, that's nice. And I'm like, 
I would go there for that. How do they keep track of uh, so they don't have two keg parties? Oh, I'm not really sure. You know, they got the hard <laughs> RAs that are there at the uh, Iowa State and the Towers. I'm glad that I, well, Omaha did okay. Now, unfortunately, they, you know, you can always tell by the announcers the, they the, send here. The, the announcers and the TV channel. So we're on True TV with the with probably maybe the worst announcing crew. But but <laughs> whoa, it's, it's whoa. Uh, hey, I, I'm no, he's right. <laughs> They're not here yet, right? <laughs> They're just getting the court down. Actually, can't there. wait tomorrow at twelve thirty. They'll be on. Yeah, and so yeah, Omaha didn't. O- Omaha didn't get its dream scenario. It's a local. We we get we get we get a couple of locals. We get but Greg McDermott. It's the Greg when McDermott they, Omaha Regional. When they unveiled that thing, and you know, and they and they and they scrolled over to Omaha, and it was the two, and you knew it was going to be Iowa State. I was surprised because I uh, Iowa State I thought was trending for a one. It turned out they were the eighth overall seed. Yes, and, so they almost lost. And so I knew right they when the, the two came up that that it wasn't going to be Nebraska because um, because they weren't going to get all the way up to the seven line. So, I, but I did get curious. So they started with UConn and they were in Brooklyn and then became the eight nine game. And I thought, well, Nebraska is probably going to be here, yeah. and they weren't. And I was like, hmm. Now come to find out. Nebraska wasn't that far away from a seven seed. That's right. That's right. They were the top eight, uh, I guess. Which would have list. ruined our current matchup. Could have ruined everything. Well, I well, I, I guess they're do you want to play Texas? Are you or do you want to play Texas AM? This is a good thing. Yeah, I don't think there's much separation. Okay. It's a it, it feels like no. an eight nine game. I I think it's I think it's a good thing because I think it's a good matchup for Nebraska, but I don't I'm not particularly fired up about the storyline. How I, I, soon? I, I would like hey, to let this whole thing how go. How soon? I'm over it. Um, yeah, I, I'm over it. I laughed for the first 45 minutes of the show this morning. Didn't say anything. Besides, just laughed. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> um, how soon on the national TNT broadcast do they they locate the former athletic director? I mean, who that, will be dressed in maroon? So he's got to go. I mean, he's going to be, be there. there. I. He was at the women's basketball. I know. He doesn't even know those players. Yeah. <laughs> Has no idea. They don't even know him. Could you all wear name tags for me? <laughs> he had a better chance of walking into PBA and knowing people than he did College Station. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you are uh, if you get there on Wednesday, Thursday, and you're downtown, you're walking in Memphis, and you happen to run into a tall, slenderish gentleman wearing a Texas A&M quarter zip, you know who that is. He won't say hello, but he'll tweet at you. <laughs> now, He's gonna there, tweet there's another it. part of, All so you're going to Pittsburgh for the food. Uh, I'll be very curious when you walk into Permani Brothers, what you think. Yeah, I don't know much about the city or anything about it other than they put French fries on a sandwich. So I, that was enough of a sell for me. Uh, you so will man. love uh, when, the, so the airport is a little bit outside of town. I don't, um, I'm not using it. Oh, that's right. You're in the Cleveland, <laughs> yeah. um, but you're going to drive through the tunnels. I, I had to so, really figure so, it out last so night. So you're going to, you're going to, you're going to drive through some, some tunnels. Yeah. Sam, Sam tweeted out last night, like don't YouTube the tunnel entry to the city. Just so when you come, it. and I thought oh, that's a crazy, when you come through the tunnel from where the airport is, which I will be coming from that side. Okay. Yeah. Um, you go through the tunnel and then when you come out the tunnel, Downtown is on your right, and it is a beautiful view. Like Heinz Field and PNC Park will be to your left across the river, but you immediately will focus to your right, and there is downtown, and it's it, it's pretty cool. I would go. I would go to the north side. Why don't you drive out and see where the Steelers and the Panthers have a? This uh, is the beautiful part about yeah. having a. I'll have access to a car, so I'll just be around. Um, also, I would go where a pit is. It's a very beautiful and historic area. Thank you. These these are good things. A lot of Bill like Mazeroski, Mark Whipple's stomping grounds. Mm-hmm. Russell Wilson, mm-hmm. Justin Fields. A uh, lot of uh, neat Patrick little Queen. Not a lot of neat little uh, neighborhoods. I'm, I'm no, I, I'm excited. Grab yourself some uh, icy light and and Yingling. I, by the way, you know we did this uh, we did this ten years ago, and Nebraska and Creighton were at the same site, and they played on. They played on the same day, right? I mean, yeah. And they were, were they in the same bracket? Were no. they was there potential for them to play each other? No. Are you sure? Well, because they played. Yeah, there was. Oh, there was. Yeah, they were yeah. Play. So if 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 it would work, I'm so glad we don't have that. They play on 
opposite days. They could all have, they could each have their kind of day and um, we'll, we'll go for that. So way. are you, but going, I think because I, I do think uh, they're both playing this weekend. I think Nebraska will win. Why don't you do it for the good of the station? Uh, instead of uh, taking an off day on uh, Friday in Pittsburgh, why don't you drive I'm to off Memphis? Anyway. Why don't you drive to Memphis? I could be walking in Memphis. That is not what that song sounds like. You guys are yes, doing a disservice does. to Mark Cohen. Yes, it No, that song is awesome. Mark Cohen's song is beautiful. He's like a, I mean, Mark Cohen might be a one hit, you know, wonder guy. Uh, are you saying our singing isn't beautiful? Well, Mark Cohen doesn't have an accent like Connor all of a sudden has an accent. So Pittsburgh to Memphis. But you'd be singing the Lone Star version. Is only 11 hours and 14 minutes. I know. And you get to go through Cincinnati and Nashville. Yeah, depending on which route you, you oh, take. Oh, I got there. great routes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah through, straight through Kentucky. Uh, that will not be happening because I'll have to get back and watch Creighton play on Saturday against Dana Altman's Oregon Ducks. Yeah, nobody Ooh. wants to go to Memphis. Already so. dissing USC. Yeah, I don't care about Lamont Paris. I don't care about South Carolina. Broad. I think actually the SEC as a conference. Fraudulent. Ooh. Also, don't want Garth Glissman as the new athletic director at uh, Nebraska. I see. I would, I would support Garth. I like people named Garth. I think that's cool. Um, Florida will have a challenge because of the guy they lost yesterday. Mm-hmm. Auburn, I'm not fully trustful of Bruce Pearl. Interesting location where they are as a four. Big Blue Nation, who I don't, I have not a lot of trust in. Actually, might have one of the better draws. I kind of like. I, I, I like them over basically anybody else in that conference. But there's nobody like this year in Cinderella's outside of McNeese state and maybe grand Canyon. There's nobody that jumps off the page and you go, that's an automatic. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, Omaha's Omaha has tended to be when it hosts NCAA tournament games, a bit of an upset city. Um, What about Moorhead state? Mm, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if they can stop Shannon. I don't. Well, I'm not sure that many people can, but I don't know. That's a that's a team to watch out for. But they beat uh, where, where were we sitting all there watching that one day? They beat like Indiana, right? Or they played Indiana? Or oh yeah, something, we something. did watch that game. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, yeah, I think it was Indiana. <laughs> Omaha upset city. Moorhead State over Illinois. How about I mean Duquesne? You know, over over BYU, a little something like that. But it is it is a little bit difficult to pick out your crazy Cinderellas this year. Oh, just I because think. there's nobody with like a ton of buzz surrounding them because they don't there's like you know Indiana State got left out they would have been a huge yeah. they would have been a huge upset pick team. I'm high on the Dukes of James Madison. Okay. Now, I think that was, would be one in a 12-5 against Wisconsin. I kind of think Wisconsin is back, but boy they sure looked like it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a little I that is going to be the one that everybody picks you're right, Josh. But no, I got him going like Far, like Sweet Sixteen, Elite Eight. Isn't it three straight years that a fifteen's beaten a two? Um, ooh, I don't know who. What that happened been? in Omaha? A fifteen to beat a two in mm-hmm. Omaha. Shout out to Kyle O'Quinn in Norfolk, Norfolk State. Um, we could go with uh, Western Kentucky over Marquette. Will Tyler Kolick be there? Mm. Can he read? Who knows? 23, 22, 21, 15 over two. Saint Peter's again. That'd be wild. Long Beach State with their fired coach over yeah. Arizona. He wins and uh, he is unfired. <laughs> the mutual separation. Literally coach. Do you think that, that that's got to bode well for his next job is that he had loyalty and stayed? Yeah. yeah. Hey, even though. What if he fired, stays? He probably stays. Why, right? still so just effort. like, so quick here, just like the portal opening up today in college basketball is ridiculous. Could they have not waited until like privately had a conversation? And then once the season is over, you're done. Instead of making it public before they play to go to the NCAA tournament, couldn't they have waited a week? Yeah, but they probably didn't think that that was going to happen. So they were all just like, "Let's uh, let's let's pull the plug. Let's just announce this." Look, and our donors are really on our hide <laughs> here. We we need to tell everyone that, that this guy's not State. coming back. Now, what blew me away about that is he used to be at Minnesota, and I liked him at Minnesota, and it didn't work out. He'd been there for 17 years. And also, they've changed their uniforms again, I saw. They, they don't say the beach on it Yeah, they don't anymore? say the beach on oh, it anymore. Sad. And it has this weird, I don't know, font. Do they rebrand to the dirt bags? No, they're still the dirt bags. 
I, I uh, may, oh, wait a minute. They might have been canceled. They canceled the dirt bags. Yeah, they might have they canceled the dirt bags. And that was only baseball. Um, how do you feel about uh, how do how do you feel about your Kansas Jayhawks? Ooh, I don't know if that was a a a lucky or unlucky draw. They look a bit ripe. They do. Can't feel good about it right now. But you, uh, it's tough to tough to predict KU in the first game. I don't want to immediately go. Samford's going to upset them. That because but McCuller, that's, McCuller and Dick Dickinson do make a difference. Absolutely. But how healthy are they? And that's the bracket. Uh, that's the bracket. That's the same bracket that Creighton's in. It's the same bracket that Purdue is in. That could. That's why I keep that saying, could I be a whack Creighton, job bracket. Creighton's path is pretty manageable it because is. they are the team that I trust the most in that bracket. I don't trust Rick Barnes in March. I don't trust Purdue mm-hmm. okay. because I don't know how, what kind of a whistle Zach Eady is going to get because that makes a huge difference. Well, I know it's funny because I said it like I, I said it w- months ago. Like I'm kind of salivating over the idea of a Creighton Purdue matchup in the NCAA tournament somewhere. If it were to happen, it would it would be in the Elite Eight? Um, but I, 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 Purdue is the favorite. It, Purdue yeah. is the favorite in that bracket, regardless of how they've done in March yeah. and whatever. Like Purdue is the favorite in that bracket. I know they're the one seed, and that's not that hot of a take, but like, um, so I don't know. Hope maybe Creighton could get there, and then we'll see Tree Man versus Tree Man. I don't want to really reveal do. too much about myself in Detroit <laughs> or my bracket, but I know they've never won a tournament game. But I have Samford in the Sweet Sixteen. Hello. Ooh. See, you have to take those chances. Mm-hmm. You don't like, like uh, you don't like Gonzaga oh. McNeese. Uh, I have uh, a second round matchup of McNeese and Samford. Yeah, I, I don't know. Gonzaga, well, I kind of like the look of them right now. So too. they seem to have righted the ship. Before yeah. you immediately go, Will Wade over Mark Few, evil over good. <laughs> Gonzaga has not. I mean, they they've made the Sweet Sixteen every year since fifteen. They haven't lost in the first round since oh eight. So pause before you immediately go. Yeah, on that. but. McNeese State and Grand Canyon look like the two that would be best equipped to win maybe a game or two in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, those twelve fives are are fun. But I think this weekend though messed up the thirteen through sixteen where I don't look at any of those and go, oh, that's going to be an upset. Yeah. Nope i i don't see I don't see any hot really fourteen to fourteen to sixteens where I'm like, mm. well, I mean, you Might never have something there. you never see it coming with the sixteen, but like, you know. South Dakota State is not that this year, right? Uh, n- not not this time around. Not as well known. The women's bracket was put together better. Well, I was gonna not make the final four. Uh, no, I think LSU will beat them. Iowa got a tough draw. <laughs> they, which is surprising, because the Kate, the uh, um, Taylor Swift of uh, college basketball, Holly Rowe was assigned to her. Yeah. So She's this is like when they hit. covered LeBron. Like they sent Winhorst. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, stay in Cleveland and cover LeBron. Holly Go to Rowe, Miami. Holly Rowe was in Lincoln when they played Nebraska. Like she yeah. had a little table all to herself, right courtside. <laughs> it was like, is ESPN doing the game today? No, just Holly Rose here. Yeah. So they're following her, and then they have uh, that. The Iowa City Regional is playing on Saturday, Monday. So a standalone, because the men won't be playing. You get Caitlin Clark. Oh, they know okay. what kind of TV ratings they're going to be. And you would think the committee would be like, okay, we get it. But their path is not easy at all because there are teams that are familiar with how Iowa plays with her um, that I think will be a, a matchup, mm-hmm. a challenging matchup. I love it. I love it. I love it. Tomorrow will be my 10th baseball game in 14 days. <laughs> hey, and then I'm uh, hopping on a plane disgusting. Hey, seven hours later. South Dakota State just swept uh, ORU in Tulsa. That'd be a good game tomorrow night. It, it will be. I hope. I hope for your sake because I, know, I actually I know, think Creighton's kind of good. Now I, t- I, I this is scary, but I, I tend, think they're okay. I, I, I tend to be in and out of listening to you on the radio, but I have a more of a interest when the game reaches the three and a half hour mark, uh-huh. just to see how we're doing. Well, you could. Uh, <laughs> it's hard for me to tamp down those emotions sometimes. <laughs> There's a little bit of anger. The tail end of that <laughs> Omaha game got to him. <laughs> When the, did it, did it really? <laughs> when the next guy is walked, and the next count is three and one, and then another guy is walked. I've seen an infinity amount of O2 counts that got to three two counts, <laughs> and then three foul balls, and then a walk afterwards. It's the most anticlimactic thing you could possibly get. It's baseball, baseball. baseball. All right. 
cool enjoy enjoy your afternoon my friend that is gary sharp that is the crossover powered by every little concrete repair in omaha at every concrete.com bracket in hand paper bracket mind you hard copy hard copies like josh Hodson. we'll come back and start things off next that's the crossover the connor happer show is next on 1620 the zone Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. A roughly 11,000 players in college football, so they're getting 600 bucks a piece. If you do the math, that's $6.6 million that they're paying out in NIL deal. No one has negotiated this $6.6 million figure on behalf of any player. This was a number that they set. Yeah, and I'd be very interested to know how they came to that number, right? Unsportsmanlike Conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. A chilly start to the week Monday. Expect mostly sunny skies. Breezy at times with west to northwest winds gusting 15 to 20 miles per hour. Highs in the low to mid 40s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV Newswatch 7. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees. The source. By your mom's house. You know what mentality can help you with? Low energy, motivation, weight gain, muscle loss, fatigue, tired all the time, feeling anxious, moody, irritability, impatience, anxiety, and depression. Mentality can help you with their board-certified physicians and their testosterone treatments that can take care of you and get you back in the game. You can regain normal function and restore your ability to perform normally at all levels just by mentality. Set up an appointment today. Go to LowTUSA.com. Get back in the game. Don't sit on the sidelines and let mentality lead the way. Family is important to me. So is shopping local and getting the best for my money. And at Jensen Tire and Auto, I get it all. They're a family-owned company that started right here in 1973. My family's been going to Jensen for years for tires, routine service and maintenance, even engine repairs. That's because we know at Jensen, they do tires and auto service right. And Jensen's team of tire and auto service professionals really take pride in what they do. Maybe that's because it's a locally owned and family owned business. It's hard to say, but I like it. Hi, I'm Matt Jensen, president of Jensen Tire and Auto, inviting you to experience the difference at our locally owned and family owned company. Check us out at JensenTireAndAuto.com today. Get ready for warm weather driving with early spring tire deals at Jensen. Save up to $200 on Goodyear, Cooper, General, Continental, Maxxis, and Kelly tires. Check out Jensen's early spring tire deals at JensenTireAndAuto.com today. His voice is often mistaken for a dial tone. He is the most uninteresting man in the world. Hi, I'm Bob Berger. I'm still the most uninteresting man in the world. But if you're tired of losing sleep over business and personal taxes, payroll and employee benefits, financial statements and QuickBooks, call me. Call Berger, Elliott, and Pritchard CPAs at 402-551-1919 or visit PEPCPA.com. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. It's the Connor Happer Show. Are we sure we want to do this? Uh, could you, like, make an announcement that we're ready? It's the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. All right, good morning. Welcome in. Happy Monday. It's the Connor Happer Show here on 1620 The Zone and on 1620TheZone.com. Connor Happer and Josh Hodson with you. 
with bracket. bracket. And, and it's, it's the, the official, official one. one. It's, it's not, not some, some you, know, you know, this, this is, is the, the one with the NCA logo on. It's not from USA Today. No, 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 no. It's not from now. I do miss the bracket, the giant bracket in the newspaper. Do they still do that? Um, I feel like they should. I'm gonna. We're getting some. We're getting some nods. Yes, behind you, Josh. Hold some things. Josh, give commentary on the state of newspapers in today's society. Feels like there's room. Okay, gotcha. Well, we are excited to welcome you to Echo. Uh oh. Yeah. What do I need to do? Am I doing something wrong here? I got, I got kicked, kicked out, out before. before. I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure what's, what's going, going on. on. Let me kick you out again. Get okay. Out All right. Well, we'll just put me on the side for now, and we'll uh, see if that uh, does anything. Once again, if you're in the YouTube comments, please tell us what you're hearing second to second. That way, Josh. Why don't we just keep the Josh full screen up today? Nobody uh, wants that. It might be good. Nobody wants that. We could just watch the emotions on Josh's face as he figures out a way to get to Memphis, Tennessee this weekend. I'll do it. I love this idea. I really do. If you're willing to, I'm surprised that you're willing to do it. I am only willing because no one else is. Yeah. And I looked around this morning and went, really? really? What if, what I'm going to have to be the guy. What if Josh Odson is the representative at 1620 The Zone and the only man in this building in attendance when Nebraska wins their first ever NCAA tournament game on Friday? What if? What if? Now, the problem with the Friday-Sunday deals, as I experienced last year, is getting back for Monday, which, you know, we could we could work around some things. We're all going to be in different places of the country over the next couple weeks. We're going to be traveling a bit. So, Josh, you have some leeway there, mm -hmm. I think. If there's any rich person listening who wants to <laughs> yeah, send me to Memphis. Memphis. Give me to Memphis. He's walking in Memphis. What's wrong with that rendition of walking in Memphis? I don't get it. I saw Schaefer asking a asking a version of this yesterday on Twitter. Apparently, there is a country cover of walking in Memphis. Why would anybody Fine. listen to that garbage? Nobody would. Uh, Plat Cat writes in on Twitter. Hi, Plat Cat. Uh, can we get Connor Happer out of the echo chamber? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna sift through some things. Yeah. During the break, we'll we'll figure some things Sometimes out. Sometimes his laptops act weird when these guys plug in. But That's why I don't have a laptop. Which here, makes me the perfect candidate to we, go to Memphis here for the weekend. Here we go. Josh wants to go to the Weird Pyramid Bass Pro Shops. It is a Bass Pro Shop. That is what he is most excited for. Drove through there on a football trip last year, and I went, you know what? I could come back here. <laughs> when Nebraska's in the NCAA tournament. <laughs> yep. That's exactly the reason I thought it would be coming back. Now, normally you'd look at the bracket. If you were, if I would have showed you this bracket before the year, you would have been like, oh, interesting. Nebraska's playing Texas A&M as an eight seed. That, that probably ended up being, they went 23 and 10. It's probably a pretty good season for them. Texas A&M, I don't know. They don't look that great on paper. 20 and 14. It seems like a not really interesting matchup and a good opportunity for Nebraska to win their first ever NCAA tournament game. And it still is all those things with an extra layer of fun in between. Fun! Well, something extra in there. Um, and if you would have told me at the beginning of the year that Creighton is going to end up as a three seed in the NCAA tournament, I would have said, yeah, that sounds just about right. <laughs> right? I mean, they're a top 12-ish team in the country. Yeah. Uh, they were 10th, I believe, overall on the overall seed list. Um, they did a lot of work for themselves in February and in early March by beating UConn and Marquette. That obviously propelled them to that three. And so they are, I was looking at some of the lines last night. Did I see that Creighton is a 12 and a half point favorite somewhere along those lines? Wow. Yeah. Which is always uncomfortable in the NCAA tournament. Yes. 12.5. Mm. Nebraska currently on the FanDuel Sportsbook is an eight seed over a nine, a one and a half point favorite to get their first ever NCAA tournament win on Friday. Here we are, Josh. This In is March. Now we don't have, um, we, we didn't get the dream scenario of the Omaha deal. I'm kind of glad. I'm once again, we, we, we kind of stayed separate with everything here, right? Omaha's got their deal. Creighton's got their deal. Nebraska's got their deal. 
Um, and they're all sort of, you know, they have their own storylines and they're all separate and will all be spread out around the country sort of covering it this week. Um, but I'm glad. I'm glad that we don't have to deal with the com- the, the sidebar conversation of like, oh, is, is Nebraska playing in Omaha an unfair advantage? And obviously that's a nationally driven narrative. That wouldn't be a locally driven narrative. They'd be like, I don't care. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. First NCAA tournament win in Omaha. I mean, that'd be, that'd be pretty sweet. I thought um, there was a pretty good opportunity for Dana Altman to return to Omaha after they won their conference tournament on Saturday yeah. night. That did not happen. Instead, they get potentially matched up with Creighton in the second round if they could um, win their first game against uh, South Carolina. Greg McDermott last night accidentally said Texas Tech. So we're going to, you know, we're going to assign one person. We're going to assign a couple people to Akron and then we're going to assign a couple people to scout out Texas Tech in Oregon. And I thought, don't do Texas Tech. <laughs> don't not time to scout Texas Tech yet. Look, coach, um, not till you get to the final four. Look, don't get mad. Promise, promise me you won't get mad, coach. Um, I did all my prep work on Texas Tech. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and turn this into you. You can give me whatever grade you'd like. It's good work. If if it's you're good. If, you, if you're playing them in the tournament, yeah. you're you're gonna win. So so we, we have this. But unfortunately, <laughs> but. it is of no use to you <laughs> at the moment. Uh Baymon writes in. I'm still trying to process three big east teams versus six Mountain West. That is something that we'll talk about today. Um, we'll kind of pour over the bracket. We'll talk about Trev Alberts from over the weekend. I will again prostitute myself to get to Memphis. Josh will just keep asking to go to Memphis. Uh, John emails in on the Equitable Bank inbox. Hi, John. Josh is going to Memphis. He needs to remember to stay on the main streets because it's oh. a dump, apparently, according oh. to John. Well, thank you for that tip, John. There you go. You're just collecting pieces of information. I just want more information about this sandwich with french fries on it. <laughs> The only thing I care about. I want the Memphis equivalent of that. And what's on the road from Cleveland to Pittsburgh? What's there to look at? A road that I will be traveling on <laughs> Wednesday during the day. Uh, yeah, so this is a very fun time of the year. Thank you for being with us. It's basketball. Uh, we, we, we took the first few minutes of the Matt Rule press conference in, in which he you know projected confidence about the future of Nebraska to, to the surprise of, of nobody. But Matt Rule... Um, and I think he would accept this. Not the story this week. Not the story this week. We got four local teams in the in the NCAA basketball tournament. He did, and try two of them are playing Texas A and M. That's right. He did try and sell us on those uh, stadium upgrades, though. <laughs> he did. After we, uh, hey, what if we called it the Tom Osborne? Complex? After we went, after we went away from it, he said, "You know, this is a hundred old built, hundred year old building. Maybe it's time. Maybe, maybe he's hey. going to continue on the Trev vision." He, he also said, hey, you know how when you get to that stadium and there's no Wi-Fi and you can't make a call or send a text? I do. We, can, we have the power to change that. We can make that work. We can actually make that happen. So we'll get into um, stories that developed over the weekend, bid stealers, what Omaha looks like, uh, conspiracy brain theories, why is Virginia in, in the NCAA tournament? Um, Trev Alberts will be introduced at Texas A&M this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Uh, he partied with the women's basketball team last, last night during their selection show watch party. They're probably like, who is this guy? Why is he here? Why Who's is he this our, old guy? Why is he at our private party? I don't know what's going on. Uh, oh, they're telling me that he's our coach's boss now? That's odd. Interesting. It's really weird. Um, and plenty more. We would love it if you got in touch with your thoughts from the bracket and anywhere else your mind takes you today. 402-951-1620 on the 42 Degrees of the Source Hotline. You can call or text that number. Tweet at Happer Show at Connor Happer on the JTech Construction Zone Twitter feed. Email Connor or Josh O at 1620thezone.com. Josh O at 1620thezone.com on the Equitable Bank inbox. You can uh, watch us along on YouTube, 1620thezone TV, or conveniently located on our website. Just one click away at 1620thezone.com. We'll have information for you guys on a on a bracket challenge that we're uh, putting together for the week um, as we go on throughout the show today, but you'll want to enter in that because there's some cool prizes coming up as well. And It's a trip to Memphis, one of those prizes. <laughs> no, and I believe we are selecting either we either have selected or are selecting today the, oh. the recipient of the various watch parties. Watch party. 
So thank you for participating in that. Is week. one of those watch parties in Memphis? <laughs> no, there's they're in Omaha or Vegas. Okay. N- not, yeah. It's going to be weird when when Creighton's in the Sweet 16 and they're playing in Detroit and uh I'll, well, be, I'll be sitting by a pool in Vegas. Half of our crew is in <laughs> Vegas, so we cannot send anyone to see Creighton. Here's a video of Creighton on the big screen. <laughs> but I, Again, I'm going to have to suck it up and go to Detroit. <laughs> Josh is going to be a traveling man the next couple My of wife's going to leave me. <laughs> All right. Um, Sam McEwen will join the show today as well. At 1 o'clock, he had some good thoughts on uh, the entire Trev situation and... Um, you know, it kind of wraps it up in a, in a tidy bow in his rewind today. We'll ask him about that at one o'clock. That's the lineup powered by the rooferies of John Higgins weather guard. We're off and running on a Monday of bracket week here on the Connor Hamper show. 1620 the zone. The best way to catch all the action is on 1620 the zone and no line for the bathroom. <laughs> Equitable bank. We take banking personally equitableonline.com. At Charmin, we heard you shouldn't talk about going to the bathroom in public, so we decided to sing about it. When you're rolling Charmin, don't you stop on the party. This is more, so roll it back, everybody. Charmin's irresistibly soft and hella nice. The crib is always soft. It's our party vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Sherman Ultra Soft is irresistibly soft and more absorbent, so you can use less. Enjoy the go with Sherman. Go for it. Take your face. The only thing worse than a pitcher running out of gas on the mound is your old phone running out of storage for your photos in the stands. Goodbye, home run. Switch to Verizon and get a great deal on a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage for all the ballpark picks you want. Just trade in your iPhone, any model, in any condition, so you'll feel like you're winning. Even when your team's not. Trade in any iPhone um, in any condition for a great deal check, on iPhone check, 15 check on me now. and get maybe iPad I'll... and Apple Watch SE with eligible service plan only on Verizon. Spring is in sight. Looking to wake up your yard this season? Make your neighbors green with MB with Lanahaw's wide selection of landscape supplies and home Hello? material. Get okay, that's not good. Today, Lanaha Nurseries, 192nd and Center. Join me, Jimmy Allen, for the Creighton Athletics Hour. We'll be talking all things Blue Jays and interviewing your favorite coaches, so you don't want to miss it. It's the Creighton Athletics Hour Thursdays, starting at 6 o'clock, only on 1620 The Zone, 1620thezone.com, and your 1620 The Zone mobile app. Howdy, what Greg Wagner joining you from the Nebraska Game and Parks. Hello. Time now for another Nebraska. I don't get it. Update. Say there's a lot to do this season in Nebraska's outdoors. There's always hiking in the state parks. There's bird watching. There's trout stream fishing action. There's scouting for that spring wild turkey hunting trip. And there's looking for shed deer antlers in your favorite woods. So there's no reason to be a couch potato, is there? No. Get outdoors and enjoy. Well, it's time. Time to get all your new permits and stamps for hunting, fishing, How about this? Or harvest, state parks, time to check your motorboat registration for renewal, yes. time to make those cabin and camping reservations in the state parks if you haven't done that already, and time to go over all of your outdoor gear for spring and summer. Get more information on Nebraska's outdoor scene by going to the Game and Parks website, outdoornebraska.gov. And that'll wrap it up. I'm Greg Wagner with Nebraska Game and Parks. Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is and has always been locally owned and operated. Now, with 160 employee owners, chances are one of us lives in your neighborhood. We take pride in taking care of you, our customers, and keeping you comfortable all year round. And as always, our technicians don't have sales quotas. When other companies send salespeople, Standard Sends Qualified Technicians is just part of... Carrier, turn to the experts. You know what mentality can help you with? Low energy, motivation, weight gain, muscle loss, fatigue, tired all the time, feeling anxious, moody, irritability, impatience, anxiety, and depression. Mentality can help you. No! Board certified physicians and their testosterone treatments. How about now? And get you back in the game. You can regain normal function and restore your ability normally at all levels just by mentality. How about now? Day, go to lowtusa.com. Get back in now? the game. Don't sit on the sidelines and let mentality lead the way. The back seat. Check the back seat. All right, come here.
Check the back seat. Gets in your head, right? Good. Because every year, dozens of children are forgotten in the backseat of a car by a parent or caregiver. All never thought it could happen to them. But with changes in routines, distractions, or a sleeping child, it can happen to anyone. Parked cars get hot fast and can be deadly. So get it in your head. Check the back seat. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Let's get back to the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Uh, congratulations to those of you who are watching along with us on the stream there during the break as you got to hear me test out my microphone. I think we got it. Live troubleshooting. I think we got to that point. Charles on the YouTube writes in, I'm going to miss that echo. Are you? Uh, Tom writes in on Twitter, listening via website on Zone TV and the random, how's this coming through <laughs> on top of the ads? It's fantastic. Yeah, Always we, pays to listen to the yeah. Zone TV version. You never show. know when you're going to get a little hot mic action. Mm -hmm. A little hot mic action. All right. Um, let's let's go to a text right away to start here. Because um, this is certainly the topic of the day. Jeff writes in. Hi, Jeff. By the way, he's badgering me about Creighton not being a one seed. Weren't going to be a one seed after they lost in the Big East quarterfinal. Wasn't going to happen. But, I mean, you saw it. It was, it was up for grabs. That last one seed, was it not? <laughs> I believe it was. Sure was. Okay, I'm just saying. If Creighton would have made a run and, and won the final in the Big East, they would have thrown their hat in the ring, which was my only point. It's my only point. Anyway, I defend that take while reading another from Jeff, who says, maybe I'm the only one who thinks this is stupid, and they doubled down with the women, too. They think they're so funny. And it's Nebraska playing both, playing Texas A&M in both the men's and the women's tournament. Feels excessive. But hilarious. So the committee has been accused of um, paying attention to storylines and stuff like that before. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, really? I mean, th this, this would be a pretty deep cut. There's some plausible deniability there, right? Because... Neither of these matchups are a stretch, really. There's no overseeding, no. underseeding. No. I mean, Nebraska was going to be on the eight line. Uh, maybe a little surprising that Texas A&M ended up ended up on the nine. But like I like I said last week, like for for those teams, and Texas A&M made a run in the SEC tournament, lost in the semifinal. Um, they made a bit of a bit of a run and increased their profile over the last week or so, and it kind of. Kind of was building, and we were thinking, oh, well, maybe they could, maybe they could match each other up, and maybe it could be in Omaha or something like that. Um, and it's the luck of the draw when you only have, you know, sixty-four teams in the regular part of the NCAA tournament. Then you know you're gonna you're gonna inevitably get some weird ones and some weird matchups. And I don't know. I'm gonna, I I guess I'll defend the selection committee on this and say. They did not know what they were doing when they put Texas A and M up against Nebraska. I'm a little bit disappointed that they are like what, like I said, I I would love to keep that storyline separate from this week. I mean, it's a it's kind of a perfect storm of emotions that are that are coming into play. Maybe as a Nebraska fan, you're like, hey, I kind of like this. This is awesome. Um, we get a chance to exercise all these demons in like one fell swoop on Friday evening. Maybe. Maybe you like it. So there's the theory out there that Matt Rule spoke to, like, hey, why can't this just be about the kids? And look, you're right when you say that. Comma, however, this is the most amazingly petty thing I've ever seen in my life, whether it's on purpose or not. And I'm going to pop some popcorn and watch this. Because it's objectively hilarious. Okay. All right. I'm not that far away from you on that. It is objectively funny. 
that they play Wait. each other in both the men's and the women. I mean, it's already really funny that they play each other in the men's in the in the NCAA. Tournament, I, the I NCAA raised my arms. I hooped. I hollered in my living room. Yeah, it's and like, then it happened. Ah! And then it happened again. Ah! And my wife and I looked at each other, and in front of our five year old said, "Holy bleep!" <laughs> It's crazy. But the real story, let me tell you the rest of the story. It is that Paul Harvey. Nebraska's in the NCAA tournament. And they get they're a favorite to win a game in the NCAA tournament. And they should win a game in the NCAA tournament. We can talk about expectations and readdress that question again. Does Nebraska now have to win a game in the NCAA tournament? Maybe, maybe not. It's, it's gonna hurt a hell of a lot more if you don't. Right. Right. And frankly, I think they have a pretty good matchup in front of them. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I I don't, you know, just looking at Texas A&M, I've admittedly I haven't much, much uh, buzz ball this year, but um, I, 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 I've checked out their profile and have, I, I thought, <laughs> oh boy, what is going on there? And it runs congruently with my other big, big college basketball narrative for the last couple months, which is nobody plays defense in the SEC. Nobody, not a single team. It's going to be awesome when Nebraska's K.S.A. Tominaga is just ripping threes. He drops 26 in the first half. Nebraska hits one of those hot shooting days where it feels like they could beat anybody in the country. And then there are the NCAA tournament darling on Friday night. Get a memo to Lincoln that you do have to score in the second half of basketball games as well. Just That is true. Just let them know if that, they don't already. That is true. I feel like they should know, but I don't know that they know. So... What do you think about the timing? I, I the timing. Friday night is a long wait. That's all oh. I know. And and it's yeah. funny because I'm kind of thinking the same. And this is all superstition because that's the only place we can go when your entire season comes down to one game, as it does for both both of our local basketball teams here. And so, like the the pessimist in me thinks a couple different things. Number one, I don't I don't love the idea of the NCAA tournament starting on. Thursday morning and Nebraska not playing until Friday night. That seems like a really long, a really long wait to me. And um, you get to watch all this stuff happen and unfold and still have the build up to the, to the Nebraska game coming I, on, on the same, in the same vein. I also say it scares me mildly that Creighton is playing in the third game of the NCAA tournament. It was right around that time last year. When Furman took down Virginia, is Jim is is Virginia an anomaly? Probably. They suck. They should never be included in the NCAA tournament by rule ever again. But Great that, take. they got in as a non-bubble team that for some re random reason got an at-large bid this year. But I remember this vividly. Connor Happer drives to Denver for a little Friday afternoon showdown between Creighton, North Carolina State in the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. And I flip on the varsity app in my car and I'm just riding along. Oh, wait, my car's breaking down. Also, at the same time, the NCAA tournament is exploding. Furman hits a giant shot. And this is this is all happening before one o'clock on Thursday afternoon. So Nebraska fans will get to sit there and they will just get to rub their hands together and they will say, Look at this. Look at this thing explode. <laughs> all before they get to play a game. And um, you know, it, it does mildly scare me that Creighton's in that third game because that's around the one o'clock on Thursday is right around the time you're, you're, you're two hours clear now from watching the prices. Right. And, um, that's right around the time where everybody say, well, well, my bracket's busted. And then it stops being funny at one Oh one, but Creighton plays in that window. You're right. Creighton plays in that window. You're right. And that you're does right. scare me a little bit. Also Creighton has to play a road game. I don't know what game. I don't know what Akron's fan base is like, but it's not very far from Pittsburgh. You think they're, I'm not really worried about? You that. think they're jacked? I'm not really worried about you think that. Part Zip Nation is. <laughs> I think Zip Nation is going to show out. They always do. <laughs> they always do, Josh. You know Zip Nation better than anybody. Remember that time they were supposed to play here and then didn't? I do. I do. They even offered them the spot in the dorms. And they didn't take it. Pull question up at Happer Show. Does Zip Nation always show out? Zip Nation always shows out. <laughs> you know how they do it. You know how they do it, Josh. <laughs> they just they're just there all um, the time. I don't mean to ping pong around. No, but... we're this this whole show, by the okay. way, is a ping pong. 
Uh, Stephen A. Smith has released his men's Final Four predictions. Oh, this will be good. Uh, number one, UConn. Sure. Number one, North Carolina. Sure. Number one, Purdue. Sure. Number nine, Texas A&M. Ha! <laughs> oh, no! Anybody but them. Nebraska. You have, the, you have the chance to do the funniest thing possible. Wreck Stephen A. Smith's entire bracket. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, Shannon Sharp has released his final four selections. All right. Thank you, Josh. Please. In both the men's and women's bracket, he has selected all four number one seeds. Interesting. Which asks, which begs the question, has Shannon Sharp watched a game of college basketball this year? Almost for sure not. Sure seems that way. No, almost for sure not. Uh, Jesse writes in on the text line as far as Nebraska playing Texas A&M. Hi, Jesse. They were listening to your show last week, but changed the location, so it looks like their idea and not yours. <laughs> Damn it! They copied off my homework! <laughs> and they're, look at, and they're just like FS1, taking credit for that picture that I took of Heinrich Harburg and Eric Crouch. They're stealing our stuff! They're ju- just... If you're gonna aggregate me, please give me credit, NCAA committee. Mm-hmm. That's all. I saw that guy do the interview with, uh, I'm sorry, not Greg Gumble. I don't know who hosted the show yesterday. I'm sorry. Uh, Zucker. Uh, sure. Uh, no, hey, Zucker. Zucker. Adam, Adam Zucker. Adam Zucker was talking to the president of the committee, and he looked sweaty as hell. He looked nervous, like he knew that Josh Odson guy is going to find me out. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be in my mitch. He's hard. Here's the thing. I don't care. <laughs> I would have liked it to have been in Omaha because now I got to find a way to get my broke ass to Memphis. You can you just just hop in the car. You that got, might be the plan. You right got now. a couple bags of sunflower seeds and a dream, <laughs> and maybe a credential. I don't know where I'm going to stay, but <laughs> you know somebody down there. Do do, do I? <laughs> no, I don't know. Can I? Is the Bass Pro Shop open 24 hours? Uh, hit up uh, hit up Robin. Uh, he you know he he likes to live the luxury life, so I'm sure he's got an extra bed. Oh wow. Something like that. All right. This is where it pays to have friends, Josh. I have acquaintances, though. That's my problem. Mm, you gotta, you gotta real, you gotta connect with people <laughs> on a personal level. Uh, Jeff says the committee is mostly athletic directors. They knew exactly what they were doing. I don't know, but like, uh, okay, so they did. So what? That's what I'm saying, right? So, so, so what? They're going to like, no one nationally is going to, Ooh, Hey, it's the Trev Albert's revenge game. I got to watch. Well, they will definitely highlight it on the broadcast on the broadcast. Yes. <laughs> they will definitely talk about it on the broadcast. I don't think they mentioned it on the selection show. Um, I was watching some CBS sports stuff afterwards. Sicko. And, dude, <laughs> I, I was so that yesterday was a whirlwind for me. I did the baseball game. Mm-hmm. And then I hit, I went right over to Sokol to Creighton's thing. And right when, you know, as is tradition, right when it comes up, I'm like, all right, how do I get to Pittsburgh? How do I get to Pittsburgh? So I'm just spending the entire night how to get to Pittsburgh. And I'm really avoiding some of the bracket reaction that I probably should have been taking in. Oh, look, the women are playing Texas A&M too in Corvallis, Oregon. That's weird. And um, so, yeah, there was, there was a lot going on last night. And I, I just, you know, I finally decided to myself that I had to pull the trigger. It was time. Oh, it was time for me. Um, let's see. This just in. Okay, what's this? Uh, is this somebody else's final four picks that no, I don't care about? No, this is a little Omaha news. Coach uh, Keith Dambrot of the Duquesne Dukes. I probably butchered his last name. I, I don't know his name. You probably don't either, so it's fine. This is the last dance. After 26 years. He's going to retire at the end of the season, whenever that is. Oh, it coach could, retirement bump? It could be in Omaha. The Dukes. Watch out, BYU. Of Duquesne. Watch out, BYU. And watch out, Illinois or Moorhead State mm-hmm. as well. You think they're just going to not win one for their coach? Hey, by the way, guys, um, I don't know if you've heard this or not, but have you heard that that no team outside of the top 20 Kempom offense, top 25 Kempom defense can win the national championship. Have you heard about this? But whoa, Con- whoa, Connor, 
I remember but when that, that means only like a handful <laughs> of teams would be able to win the national championship. I, it's crazy to think about, but it's true. What if you put all those teams logos on one graphic and sent it out? I remember when this stat entered my field of vision, like, Oh, it's probably been more than five years now, but more than five years ago, somebody started, somebody came up with this thing. It's like, wow, I recognize this trend. If you just look at all the Kempom national championship teams, well, I noticed that we, you know, only exclusively get ones, twos, threes, winning national championships. So let's check out what their metrics look like. And it all checks out to where they, you know, are this and this offense, defense on Kempom. And every, and every year since it has grown more and more mainstream. So now we take it as gospel and it is Bible. Now it's true that the good teams will win the national. Ch- one of the good teams will win the national championship. That is indeed true. So it's very likely that this will happen yet again this year. But I'm really sick of seeing the stat by this point. I'm Ken, done Ken with. Palm. I'm Ken Palm. That's how Rick Pitino said it. I don't even care about Ken Palm. Was that Rick Pitino or was it Christopher Walken? Christopher Walken. He could pl- actually he could play Rick Pitino in the movie. Ooh, that would be pretty funny. An Italian dinner. <laughs> Starring Christopher Walken. <laughs> oh, but the Ken Palm. Ken Palm. What do we care about Ken Palm? It's not on my watch. Sounds like a good movie, Josh. Honestly, it does. I would I would definitely watch it. Five stars. Uh, Charles writes in. Hi, Charles. How many double birds will Trev see in Memphis? What's the highest number I can say and not get laughed out of the room? Well, okay, so let's do the math. How many Nebraska fans will there will there be? I I don't even know what a comfortable number is. Like you got 5,000, 4,000? Yeah. Something like that. I I don't know. I don't even know what that would be. It's as, it's as it's somebody, a relatively difficult place to get to. Right. As, as somebody who's looked into going, it's not easy. No. It's not easy. And so a, a couple thousand. And so you think so a double bird is one, right? Sorry, I didn't mean to do that on the camera, but yeah, uh, it's one double bird is one. So one right, double bird right. per person. Um, but I imagine maybe some people like go around in circles and then they give them the double bird again. Um, I think that Trev Alberts will see upwards of one thousand double birds. Just on Thursday, a lot. getting ready for the NCAA tournament game. Now, here's the great news for him. He'll get to leave after Friday night because they'll be done. They'll be going home. Uh, let's take a phone call. 42 degrees of source hotline. We got a bracket potpourri today. We're just we're just all into the basketball vibes right now. Let's take a uh, phone call from Randy on the 42 degrees of source hotline. Randy, what's up, my friend? Well, I got a question. This is this is a you know, what do you think of the uh, the the woe is me is that the committee didn't pick me. I'm going to take my sour grapes and stay home. Rick Pitino's of the world. <laughs> um, pretty because it's Rick Pitino. It's 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 funny. Obviously, we'd have a much serious, much more serious discussion about it if it was like a local team or something like that. There, there was a couple of high rated teams that 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 didn't get picked either. That I think at least at least one other I heard last night. I don't remember the name. Now I'll Pitino. say this: I, I, I will defend. I will defend the move a little bit. Because the portal opened today, and we Rick Pitino has been very clear about not liking any of his players, and so he's looking to go replace those guys. And so they got it. There's a lot of teams who got left on the doorstep of the NCAA tournament who have just decided to go into full roster build moment right now. And I think that's okay. Like if you're a developmental program and you're you're going to depend on retaining guys year over year, then yeah, you want to play in the NIT. If you're St. John's with Rick Pitino, probably not going to go that direction. So I I. I for him, it's probably, you know, it, it's, it makes sense. I'll, I'll add this. It, it kind of plays into your conspiracy theory that uh, they're not letting some teams in to make the case for expanding the tournament because not in, not this year, but teams keep doing this. It's going to kill the NIT and then the NCAA tournament committee is going to go, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, we want these yep. kids to have a place to play. Yeah, they don't have anywhere to play. Yeah, so there's that, Randy. But it is, it is definitely sour grapes. Well, I mean, it could have played in Madison Square Garden, or you know, right, right in their freaking backyard too. I mean, had he thought about it, but be a great recruiting tool locally. Yeah, so. yeah. 
Well, thanks for the call, Randy. Appreciate it. Do they still play the NIT finals at MSG? Do, do we do that anymore? What, what has happened to the NIT? NIT finals. Let's find out. Uh, so the NIT. Wow, Nova got a one seat. Huh? Oh, it's actually it's at Hinkle, Hinkle. Fieldhouse this year. <laughs> another one of those oh great it's uh, not at madison square garden it's at hinkle field house a, a, a basketball trip great where are we going what what great location are we going indianapolis well here's what ah, you're gonna have hell. to do if you're like a five seed in the nit you're gonna have to uh you're gonna have to go to athens georgia then you'll have to go to probably like wake forest mm. and then you'll probably have to go to like villanova and then you'll end up finally in Hinkle Fieldhouse. Kyle and Eptoon. What a trip. Thank you, Josh. In Eptoon. One seat. Saved his job. <laughs> Didn't get fired. Villanova should have been a lot better than they were. Uh, another phone call here from Rick on the 42 Degrees of Source Hotline. Hi, Rick. Uh, Josh Connor. Thank you for taking my call. Of course. Uh, I think the NCAA lacks integrity when they paired up Nebraska against the two teams where the former athletic director ended up. And, you know, that's just my two cents on it. But uh, there's a, there's, I, I don't know if it's a rule in baseball, but basically if you're beating the team by you know, 10 or 15 runs, you don't have your guys go up and bat left-handed or, you know, make a mockery of the game. And, and I think that's what the NCAA has not necessarily made a mockery of this matchup, but they put undue pressure on the women's and the men's basketball teams to have to go down and, and let alone travel and, and face a you know formidable opponents, but it, 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 there's no reason for it other than to be a clown show or maybe to sell another ticket or two. But uh, and I do object to the people that would be putting their ming- middle finger up on at Trev. I would more like to see signs in the ju- uh, signs in the stand saying, "Hello, Judas." So <laughs> thanks for taking my call. Thanks, Rick. Well, it is the Easter season. <laughs> If there is a sign at that basketball game that says, hello, Judas, that's objectively funny. Not very Nebraska nice, but pretty funny. I could be that guy, you everybody. Could. We could send Josh as a plant down there. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. All right. Um, so I, I got some thoughts on the on the big picture here and the bid stealers and 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 all of this stuff. But we we'll take any of your thoughts on the bracket, how it looks. I don't think it's a mockery or close to a I mean, I really don't. They could have put Creighton and Nebraska together. You know, they could have put rivals up together. They could have they could have done all these things and they and they didn't end up doing it. Um and the fact of the matter is there's pretty much a story with every every team you're gonna end up playing. Right. There's there's going to be a story there. Mm-hmm. Admittedly, this is a big one. This is a big one. But is it purposeful? And is it, you know, is it for clicks and ratings and stuff like that? Like, no, people are going to watch Nebraska in the NCAA tournament. People are going to watch or Nebraskans are going to watch Nebraska in the NCAA tournament. People will watch the NCAA tournament in general. And then they'll be learning about Trev Alberts and his uh, his his plight for the last week live when they watch on uh, on TNT on Friday. They'll be learning that for the first time. So no, I, I don't I don't think it's some conspiracy or whatever that they put those two together. It just kind of ended up that way. That's okay. And that's okay. Very okay. And that's okay. Josh is definitely okay with it. All right. Uh, we will return on the other side. I do want to get to a couple of the things that Matt Rule said. I know football, basketball, whatever. Uh, we'll still get to some of that as well. Your tweets, thoughts coming up on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Connor Happer Show. Follow us on Twitter at Happer Show for all the latest news and views. We may even say something interesting once in a while. Unlikely. Really, guys? Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. Is your concrete cracked or uneven? Hey everyone, Coach Greg McDermott here to explain why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. Many people think they need to replace broken concrete, but repairing it provides durable protection and comes at a fraction of the cost. Everlevel provides permanent repair solutions to fix your concrete and protect it against future damage. And it all comes with a long-term transferable warranty. 
They offer free inspections to walk you through the entire process. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today. You can find pizza anywhere. But when you want pizza pie piled high with more toppings, that's when you come to my place, Godfather's Pizza. For a limited time, get your hands on two of my large one-topping pizzas. Pick pepperoni, beef, black olives, you choose. All this food for only 30 bucks. Feed your whole mob without breaking the bank. Hey, it's an offer you can't refuse. Godfather's Pizza. Do it. It's the most time-honored tradition to start the weekend, grabbing a cold one from a local Nebraska brewery. Let's be real here. It's cold outside, and you don't want to drink the same boring beer as those Hawkeye fans. Drink Nebraska brewed beer, cider, or seltzers instead. Each week, we're putting the spotlight on a unique Nebraska brewery with One Beer Friday. Share your brew on social media with the hashtag One Beer Friday, and you'll be entered to win a $25 gift card to a local Nebraska brewery. Nebraska is the good life with great beer. Click Nebraska.beer to learn more. Need tires but can't get away? Or is your company fleet plagued by unscheduled downtime? Check out Jensen Mobile Express Services at JensenTireAndAuto.com. The easiest way to get new tires delivered and installed at your location. Jensen. You know what mentality can help you with? Low energy, motivation, weight gain, muscle loss, fatigue, tired all the time, feeling anxious, moody, irritability, impatience, anxiety, and depression. Mentality can help you with their board-certified physicians and their testosterone treatments that can take care of you and get you back in the game. You can regain normal function and restore your ability to perform normally at all levels just by mentality. Set up an appointment today. Go to LowTUSA.com. Get back in the game. Don't sit on the sidelines and let mentality lead the way. It'd be great if life came with remote control. You know, you could hit pause when you needed to or hit rewind. Like that time you knocked down that wasp's nest. Uh-oh. Or that time you forgot to roll up your windows in the car wash. Fantastic. Yeah, a remote control would have come in handy then. Well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome. But pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes like managing your weight, getting active, stopping smoking, and eating healthier, you can stop pre-diabetes before it leads to type 2 diabetes. It's easy to learn your risk. Take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Life doesn't come with a remote control. Yikes! So you're on your own with the wasps. You have the power to take control of prediabetes. Visit doihaveprediabetes.org today. That's doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. The Zone Inbox is brought to you by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. Email me, Connor Happer, with the Connor Happer Show at Connor, C-O-N-N-O-R, at 1620thezone.com. Send me your love, your hate, and maybe a few hot takes. The Zone Inbox, presented by Equitable Bank. Tell me, are you a Christian child? And I said, ma'am, I am tonight. I'm walking in Memphis. <laughs> we could be killing it we in the karaoke bar. We could be killing it in Memphis at the karaoke bar. Come on, Connor. Who says no? Just saying. Just saying. We need to get Josh to Memphis. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. What a day it was, though, on uh, on Saturday. While Nebraska was, it looked like they were going to do it again to Illinois and then kind of forgot to play the second half. So I have a question for you, Nebraska fans. Ooh. Do you, question for you, are you, um, you know, I know people got after me on Friday for saying that Creighton's loss in the Big East tournament, you know, it didn't, it didn't really matter all that much because it wasn't that important and their seating is secure and Connor explaining away losses. Yes. So it's only, it's only right. And it's only fair of me to say the exact same thing for Nebraska. Yeah. You disappeared in the second half. Yeah. There was an opportunity that was missed there against Illinois. Yeah. You could have been hoisting a banner 2024 big 10 conference tournament champions. But that is the exact definition of a high-reward, low-risk situation. That's what a conference tournament is, and especially when you're a three-seed in that conference tournament. And so it was really cool when Nebraska was doing what they were doing, and they drilled Indiana. And then 
you know, played really well for a half against Illinois. Um, and the buzz about it was was awesome. It did feel like 2014 again, kind of not in the same conference tournament way, but it kind of felt like it would have in the NCAA tournament just with the buzz about Nebraska basketball at the time. But guess what, Josh? It don't matter. It seems like worlds ago where Nebraska lost because they didn't make a shot in the second half against Illinois. It, it seems like it was forever ago. Why? Let me introduce you to my friend. It's this printed bracket. Hard I know, copy. I know she haven't filled out any teams. No, there. no, what? no, no. This bracket will remain untouched. Oh, okay. This will not this, this will not get filled out. I'll print out another one to fill it's out. Beautiful. It, look at how good it is. And it also tells you, because it needs to be said several times between now and Monday, April 8th. The final four is on TBS. You're going to forget that and tune to CBS. Oh, wow. I, I already did forget that, yeah, Josh. Yeah. Thank you for the bracket. Mm-hmm. Thank you to the bracket for reminding me. There you go. National TBS. Championship. TBS. Very fun. Scan the QR code to learn more. Tiger Shark Diver says, I haven't seen a hard copy in years, and I didn't know we made paper anymore. Oh, we use a ton of paper here in this office. That's just you, Josh. I love a hard copy. That's just you. Got some stories. Uh, speaking of Saturday, we we had, I mean, really things fell apart on Saturday. We had several bid stealers over the weekend. Dirty, dirty bid stealers. That's right. Uh, North Carolina State with their giant center. I loved people finding out at various times throughout. Oh my god! The did you know DJ Burns is a thing that a football player plays basketball? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if he does. He actually play football? He looks like he could. I don't. Well, actually, I don't know that. He but, looks like a great run stopper. Um. Yes, DJ Burns exists, and it is around this time every year where we see like a really fat guy, um, make some noise in the NCAA tournament because fat guys can be skilled as well as he is. Um, so NC State steals a bit out of the ACC. Oregon steals a bit out of the Pac-12. Colorado just barely ekes into the field in the first four. They lost in the Pac-12 championship game. Um, you know the the AAC went absolutely haywire. Once again, don't turn my mic off, Josh. <laughs> no, I was nowhere near your button. Just the board oh, being really? expertly engineered. Jeez. So the AAC went completely haywire. Um, the A10 went haywire, right? Every, every low seed won there. And so we had Temple UAB in the AAC final, and somebody was going to steal a bid from that. UAB ended up being the team that got on top of it. And so there was about four or five of them as Saturday developed where it was like, whoa, there is some real pressure on these bubble teams. And the, and the, the bubble consisted in almost entirely of big East teams. So, yep. That's why they got left out. And they all got left out. That, I mean, think about it. And, 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 you know, we we talked about them all year and, and this conference. I know that there's people who are listening to the show who are Nebraska fans and who are Big Ten fans, and they, they will poo-poo the Big East. It's a very good basketball conference. It is hard to win. It, so, like, just off the face, think about this. UConn's obviously, you know, they, they've been the best team in the country basically all year, Mo- most consistently. I Closest guess all year. thing to a wagon we have. Right. Definitely. That's a good way to put it. Creighton and Marquette went 14 and six in the league. They're two and three seeds. Creighton ended up being the two seed in the conference tournament, a three seed in the national tournament. Marquette, the opposite. Seton Hall won one less game and didn't make it. St. John's won three less games and did not make it. And I'm not going to sit here and pine for Villanova, <laughs> but couldn't you know, be us. Providence won 21 games and went 10 and 10 in the league. And they didn't make it. You know, it, that that's, that's just the big East side of it. Oklahoma was one of the first four teams left out. Oklahoma, you know, in a, in a very, very tough basketball conference went eight and 10 in that league, but did a couple things in the non-conference. Um, they were the first team, I believe they were the first team that was left out. And so here we are. We got to just turn these lights off because they flicker. <laughs> it, it, it's it's nonsense. Um, and St. John's wasn't even one of the first four out. Wasn't even one of the first four out. That's how far away they were from uh, the tournament. It, it's it, there's there's I don't know. 
I'm a Big East homer, obviously, but there's no way. There's no way. And like I don't I don't think St. John's has this airtight resume or anything like that. They're they're just as bubbly as anybody else. But then to to see how the rest of the field played out with Virginia making the first four, with FAU ending up as an eight seed in the NCAA tournament solely off of their run from last year where they made the final four. They had as shaky of a resume as just about anybody. Horrible, horrible losses. And this uh, tournament committee that claims to never know any storylines uh, re- revolving around the teams that they're debating passed up a chance to have Rick Patino take a sixth team to the NCAA tournament. Now, far yeah. be it for me to argue for Rick Patino, but feels like you would have done that. Yeah. If you want to talk about storylines and how they care about storylines, I mean, they don't care about storylines. They don't th- even think about I it. I guess they don't care about storylines. It's as evidenced by them not putting Rick Pitino in the NCAA mm-hmm. tournament. They obviously don't care. All right. Uh, to the phones, here's Nebraska Ball Mike on the 42 Degrees of Source hotline. Hi, Mike. Good to hear from you. Good to call, gentlemen. Can we get one thing straight? Sure. It took an NBA player going nuts to beat us in game two in Big Ten, champ- uh, Big Ten tournament. Agreed. He's an NBA player. He, he absolutely is. Mind, and he did. We didn't quit. We put up 85 points. We didn't quit. This team's different. This is going to be a problem for somebody, whether it's in Memphis or not. We're going to be a problem. We're going to be a tough out, and they know it. And Trev knows it. And that's the best thing we can do is play harder than we've ever played this year and bust our ass. And Josh, we got to find a way to get you to Memphis. Oh! Josh, if we get to, if you get to Memphis and we win, you go on every time we go. I mean, it would be an honor. <laughs> you like you're you're the you're the team mascot at that place. So what an odd bedfellow. <laughs> I, I'm I'm. I've been a Mark Cone fan for decades, and, and I've been trying to get him here. And for some reason, he always sticks to the coast, but I've heard he's great life, and he's much bigger than a one-hit wonder. For those that know, he's had at least 10 studio albums, so he's got some talent, and he's had it for a long time. Just something I'd throw in. Thank you, Mike. I, I, well, I, right. what, what, what's your plan for the week? How do you how do you plan on on taking in Nebraska basketball? Out. Look, we get to watch everybody and play on Friday night. So, like, somebody's going to be asleep at that point. I just hope it's not us. Yeah. Nine thir- at eight o'clock on Friday night. That's a long wait. It is. But there are going to be a lot of teams that wish they were still playing at that point. And we will be. I think they'll be playing on Sunday, too. What? I think they'll be playing on Sunday, Mike. I hope so. Houston's going to be really tough if we get there, but... Houston will be very tough, yes. Okay, well, Mike, I I appreciate the emotion. Thank you. There he goes. Random, our uh, uh, Nebraska ball, Mike. Haven't heard from him in a while. What was he? Who who has multiple studio albums? Uh, the the fine fellow who sings "Walking in Memphis." Oh yeah, no, we, we well, I couldn't tell where that was headed. I, did he like our uh, Did he like our rendition of "Walking in know. Memphis"? I don't know how he could not have. I didn't think so either. I could be the the mascot for Nebraska basketball. Okay, so I there's a lot of emotion going on right now, so. I don't want to rain on the parade too much, but I do have this to offer. I believe that Nebraska basketball will beat Texas A&M on Friday night and win their first ever NCAA tournament game. I believe that. I could be there. I've sifted through the numbers. I like how Nebraska's playing right now. They're confident in themselves. They'll have a little bit of an edge to them. I like them winning that game. I could not like them less against Houston. Oh, no. One of the worst. I mean, obviously, it's because <laughs> they're good. But one of the worst possible matchups that you with Houston is 
not just a one seed, not just a team who's capable of winning the national championship. If it was Purdue, it would be different. If it was North Carolina, it would be different. It, that's not why I think Nebraska is going to lose that game when they get there. The, their their pressure Clamps. and their toughness is unbelievable. They will like shut you out for minutes at a time. And Nebraska has not necessarily been known as a team with the most like kind of precision on, on offense and stuff like that. Can they get hot? Absolutely. Is it a lot harder to get hot when you're not even close to your spots at all? Yes. So if you're dreaming about the sweet 16, let's my advice to you would be one game at a time. One of those one game at a time. You address Texas A&M head on <laughs> and then you address Houston head on. But Houston is a bear. That is not that would not be pretty for Nebraska. I don't think. Um, they might score 46 points. One of those things where, uh, Hey, you know, Nebraska, Nebraska beat Texas A&M scored like 85 points. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're great. They're great shape going into Houston. And then they score like 42 against Houston. You go, Hey, what the hell happened? Yep. Yep. It'd be, a, it'd be a bit of a tough pill to swallow, but not really because you would have won an NCAA tournament game against Trev Alberts against Trev Alberts. Texas A&M Aggies. Exactly. And then everything else after that is gravy. I think so. I, I, I hope that's the approach. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you know, we get to dreaming a little bit this week and we get emotional a little bit this week and you start thinking about paths and stuff like that. I will say the path gets a whole hell of a lot easier if you take down Houston in the round of 32. Or and the game after out. that looks super gettable if they can get through the number one seed. Hear me out. What if someone gets Houston for you? Longwood already in our menchies today. The Longwood Lancers. That's true. That's true. We love the Longwood Lancers. Joel asked us earlier. Hi, Joel. Would there be a better matchup than Moorhead State and Longwood? And Longwood responded, maybe not. Now, Moorhead State and Longwood would be meeting in the national championship game. Uh, if and that I'd was watch. the case. I would watch. Yes. Now, Joel did not tag either of these schools. He didn't. So the whoever runs the socials over there. Oh, uh, they're grinding today. Yeah, they're just vanity searching. Good job by them. Big South Conference. Hell yeah. Hashtag go wood. So they're in on the joke. Yeah. I like that. All right, we'll come back. Josh has the odd news when we return on... 1620 Dizel. Mornings with Sharp and Handley. Screw that. You've got Shaka Smart. You've got a guy who gets out on the floor and plays defense on his own end, too. I mean, come on. No, that is, that is a bunch of crap. That is absolutely a bunch of crap. That, first of all, when I think of that building at its best, it is never, ever crossed the mind of like, man, these students or this crowd is brutal. That's what makes it so tough. No, they just get loud. They get into it. 95% of it's positive. The other 5% is nothing different than what you're going to see at any other venue. Mornings with Sharp and Handley. Weekday 6 to 10 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Bright skies for your Monday afternoon with temperatures remaining a little bit chilly with a high today in Omaha 43 but mainly feeling like the 30s. Northerly winds possible up to about 15 to 20 miles an hour with very high fire danger for parts of eastern Nebraska and western Iowa. Clear skies stick around tonight, cold with a low of 32. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. The Connor Happer Show returns in minutes on 1620 The Zone. Green Sports Update. Creighton Baseball returns to Charles Schwab Field, Omaha tomorrow for a midweek matchup with South Dakota State. First pitch is set for 6 p.m. The first fans in attendance can expect a limited quantity of clear bags. For more information, to purchase tickets, or to follow along all things Creighton Athletics, visit GoCreighton.com. And that's your Creighton Sports Update. 1620 The Zone proudly supports Creighton Athletics. To thank you for 40 unforgettable years, Dell Technologies is celebrating with anniversary savings on their most popular tech. For a limited time only, save on select next-gen PCs like the XPS 13 Plus, powered by Intel Core processors and more. 
Plus, curate your dream setup with great deals on select monitors, mice, and more must-have electronics and accessories. When you shop online at dell.com slash deals, you'll have access to leading-edge technology and free shipping on everything. Again, that's dell.com slash deals. Forget the drive to Colorado or Missouri. Dub into any Omaha 42 degrees and indulge in a curated cannabis experience. Premium flower, cannabis, pre-rolls, and cannabis accessories paired with an elevated customer service experience. All are waiting for you at 42 degrees. From novices to connoisseurs, we're here to elevate your cannabis journey. 42 degrees, your destination for top-tier cannabis, second-to-none product selection, and exceptional service. By your mob's house. Email unsportsmanlike conduct on the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox with whatever is on your mind, from your hot takes to what you think is one. The Zone Inbox is brought to you by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. We want to hear from you on the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox. Mario Street Tacos or Steak and Chorizo Queso Blanco Enchiladas can only be found in one place. Fernando's, great Mexican food, awesome margaritas, and a wonderful family atmosphere. Fernando's, Omaha's favorite Mexican for more than 30 years. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circus Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. And now we've reached the point in the show where Josh Odson reads the peculiar, the bizarre, the comical, the odd news with Odd Son. Odd news, Odd Son. See what we did there? The Odd News with Odd Son. Okay, Josh, time for the Odd News. Yes, that's right. I was so unplugged from anything else that happened this weekend, so I'm very curious to see where we end. That's kind of what I'm banking on here in this segment um let's see okay let's start here the orlando magic played the toronto raptors sunday that would be yesterday orlando magic the orlando Orlando magic have you heard their song i have not orlando magic uh the magic defeated the raptors 111 to 96 it was a game featuring two highly rated rookies Toronto's Grady Dick put up 10 points and an assist, one whole assist, in 27 minutes of action, while Orlando's Anthony Black scored two points in three minutes of action. Oh, no. After the game, the two rookies met at midcourt. Oh, no. And did a jersey swap. No, Josh. What? This is a little risque. (laughs) It's very risque, and I'm not even there yet. While a nice gesture, their last names, when put side by side, told a certain story that was impossible for Bally Sports Florida audiences to ignore. Did they know what they were doing? Certainly basketball fans noticed. Again, their names are Anthony Black and Grady Dick. I'm going to say that they did. Uh, Sure seemed that way. Yeah. They stood in the exact... Worst or best, depending on your yep. view of the situation. Yep. I'm going to say that they knew exactly I, what they were doing. Uh, should we put it up? 
put it to a poll. Did they know what they were doing? Question mark. <laughs> did they did they know what they were doing? Yeah. Um. Let's see if I can find this picture. Don't look s- at the smile on search. Grady Dick's face. Don't search their last names alone. I did not see. How did this not you were, come up on my thing the oh, other day? You were so bracket focused. Was this yesterday? Yeah. You were baseballed up, and then you were bracketed up. I did not see this at all. You didn't have time. But the the smirk on both of their faces mm-hmm. tells you everything you need to know. Boy, sure seems like they knew what they were doing, doesn't it? Yep. That's <laughs> going to be a yes for me, Josh. Okay. The picture is, for the record, very funny. It is. <laughs> it's, it's TBS. It is. Very funny. Uh, let I mean, let's get to college basketball. Okay. Uh, so suppose we haven't talked enough about it. Right. Things happen, you know, mistakes happen all the time. We don't need to laugh at anyone's misfortune, but during yesterday's Atlantic 10 championship game in the second half, I believe there was about 17 minutes to go in the half the confetti began raining <laughs> from the ceiling of the arena Yeah, between VCU and Duquesne. Again, Duquesne finds their way into the show. They're coming to Omaha. Uh, they had a mm-hmm. sizable, the Dukes did, 38-23 lead. Yes, two minutes into the second half. And uh, as he... What is this, the Big East title game? <laughs> as he does so often. Kevin Harlan found himself in a situation. Oh, when the confetti is coming from the ceiling. Harlan on the call for CBS Sports. Oh my gosh, they've got confetti falling right now. Confetti is falling on the floor. They're going to have to stop playing. We can't see our notes. These players can't work on this I can't see my notes. Confetti is everywhere. Someone hit the wrong button. Nice. That's like doing a game. That's like doing a baseball game with Alex Sindelar when there's a trash bag that finds its way onto the field blown by the wind. Everything comes to a halt. Did he call it? The There's a bag on the field. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I loved it. You know, you got to keep yourself entertained during during those days. Absolutely, a little bit, especially when pitchers refuse to throw strikes. Well, maybe pitchers across the country unable to hear my plead. Just throw strikes. It's going to be fine. They might hit it over the fence. They might hit it hard. Chances are, it's going to work out okay for you. Hmm. Uh, breaking news this morning out of Paris, where they're preparing for the Summer Olympics. Uh, it used to be that the uh, Olympians were not allowed to fraternize with each other due to uh, COVID protocols. Well, those have been lifted. And ladies and gentlemen, it is my uh, sex is back. pleasure to report to you that, yes, sex is back in the Olympic Village, ladies and gentlemen. It's huge. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 300,000 condoms will be stocked in the Olympic Village this summer. 14,500 athletes and staff will give out 300,000 condoms, enough for each person to have sex multiple times per day, in addition to other amenities. It's like when the NCAA tournament comes up and everybody starts quoting that Ken Palm stat. This is like when this is that for the Olympics. (laughs) <laughs> yes the olympics are here time for all the athletes to have sex with each hey, other did you know all the olympic athletes have sex with each other <laughs> yeah apparently that's all they do they just go and they have sex with each other uh the beds have been uh weighted up to 550 pounds not a lot of 550 pound olympic village athletes i would venture a guess well there's some weird sports out there they'll have nearly 400 yards of buffet that's a great stat. It is. 400 yards of buffet. I didn't know that's how we measured buffets, but I'm glad it is. 400 yards of buffet? Uh-huh. Now, that put that on the band name list, Nick, <laughs> Nick Grimm. 400 yards of buffet. I love it. I don't think I've ever... I can't even fathom what that would look like. Mm-hmm. I haven't even... That's four what's football the mo- fields. What's the most yards of buffet you've ever seen? 10? Yeah, I, uh, yes, uh, something like that. Yeah. Maybe if you like sprawl it out, maybe it goes in some sort of a circle. Maybe if you sprawl it out, it's like 15 to 20 yards. I 400 yards of buffet. I challenge you when you are in Vegas 
to find the longest yardage of buffet. That I she don't can. think that I'm not a ba- I'm not a Vegas buffet guy. You're not. I'm really not. I don't think I'll be frequenting the buffet. Nick is going to ask you, "Hey, can we find a 99 cent shrimp cocktail somewhere?" I don't think that exists anymore. I, don't think it does. I think that only existed in, in the Vegas time their vacation. Vegas vacation <laughs> came out. Which, by the way, did we decide on that for their movie club deal? Uh, everyone is renting or pull, dusting off their DVD of The Hangover. That's what they decided? Yes. Hell yes. Okay. I am in. That's, uh, a, that's a great every, idea. Everyone found the slightly problematic nature of the movie worthwhile to revisit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but oh, I don't want to... I don't want to talk for I don't want to talk with El Kent for 20 minutes about how you couldn't make that movie in 2020 or as El Kent would say movie in 2024. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about how funny it was. Why is Bradley Cooper such an esteemed actor when he sang all these derogatory slurs throughout the movie? It was a different There's time. no doctor named that. I'll be a Doug. <laughs> I'll be a Doug. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of things about that movie that probably wouldn't work. But that's not the. That's that's not what I want to talk about. We're no, talking about how funny it actually was at the time. I'm sure that'll be a piece. Okay, good. And then you'll move right along. That's good. Okay, Josh. Thanks. Thank you, Connor. That is the odd news. Oh, uh, real quick. Okay, breaking news. Mina Kimes says discovered Kese Tomonaga. What is she? What is she saying? Uh, somebody sent out a highlight reel like, hey, everybody, watch out for this guy. He's the Japanese Steph Curry. And Mina Kimes said, quote, gonna bandwagon the hell out of the Huskers this year. Okay, let's put a pin in that exact idea, and we'll come back with it next. Are the Huskers going to be America's team? A darling this week. Next on 1620 The Zone. Big names, big games. We've got them all. 1620 The Zone. Car repair is car repair. Most places you go can change your oil or fix your brakes. The difference is the experience you'll get at Omaha Car Care. We're part of the community. We were born here, and we believe that our relationship with you should be built to last. We're going to consult you, not sell you. We're going to give you a free loaner car. We're going to treat you like a valued friend that we want to continue to see in the years to come. I'm Rick Betker, owner of Omaha Car Care, and we'll be along for the ride. Roofing, siding, and gutters. Make the right call with the Rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. Velocity Clinical Research in Omaha frequently conducts clinical trials for a broad range of investigational treatments. Typical studies involve medications for acne, allergies, chronic diseases, depression, and others. They also perform vaccine studies for people of all ages, conducting innovative research that has a positive impact on lives. Click for current trials at VelocityClinicalTrials.com. More trials are launching in March. Compensation for study-related time and travel. Find out more at VelocityClinicalTrials.com. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that we can give our daughters everything they need to grow and learn. But not every child can focus on classes and play dates. Nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. face hunger. That's one in six. School lunch might be their only meal each day. And it's heartbreaking to imagine any child going to bed hungry. We're dreaming of a perfect day when kids can smile, play, and just be kids without worrying about where their next meal will come from. Feeding America is working to make that perfect day a reality. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste. That food is given to families and children in need. Being a kid should be about doing things that make an ordinary day extraordinary. Learning to play an instrument, building a sandcastle, hosting tea parties. Hunger should never be an obstacle to growing up. You can help end childhood hunger in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Sometimes I just cannot believe all the storms we've gone through here. I can only hope that we'll be able to leave this house to you one day, baby. You're our legacy. Planning for these disasters will make sure we're safe and is the best way to protect that legacy. You know what? We should make an emergency communication plan. That way we're ready this year. At my dorm, we have emergency kits for earthquakes and wildfires, but I'm sure there's something more local I can send you with the link. Okay. 
smart. Protect your legacy. Visit ready.gov forward slash plan for the tools and tips you need to start your emergency preparedness plan today. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Omaha fans, are you ready to score tickets to your favorite events hassle-free? Yes. Shop local tickets for less located right here in Omaha at 145th and West Center Road. No hidden fees, just transparent pricing. And when you use the promo code THEZONE at checkout, you'll save big at ticketsforless.com. Whether it's sports, concerts, or something else, Tickets for Less has you covered. If you have a question, call today, 402-398-1999. You'll never find better customer service because every seat holds a story. Find yours and use the promo code THEZONE at checkout at ticketsforless.com. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Welcome back. Connor Happer, Josh Hudson with you at the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone and on 1620thezone.com. We have a bracket. The local teams are in it. Some of them are playing Texas A&M. Half of them. Half of them, in fact, are playing Texas A&M. I am doubling down on my take that Iowa's not going to make the Final Four on the women's side. They're definitely not going to make it on the men's side. <laughs> Boom. Roasted. Yep. But, uh, no, they're going to be a horrible disappointment. The TV networks are going to be very sad when Caitlin Clark's not in the final four. And she will not be. The pivot will be interesting. Where do they go from here? It, it will be. How do they cover it? Do they, does, does anybody go at all? Where's Holly Rowe going to be? <laughs> Who knows? All right. Uh, to the phones. Here's Joe in Vegas on the 42 degrees of source hotline. Hi, Joe. Brother. What's going on? Well, I still, I've been listening to you guys. I don't, obviously, I don't listen as much as I used to. Uh, so I do a lot of the podcast now afterwards, but I have seen that uh, my favorite sports talk radio station and some of its cohorts are going to be in my fair city here. Uh, a, I wanted to know when you're going to be here. When, when's that happening? That would be next week, Wednesday to Saturday. Outstanding. I'm off on Wednesdays and Thursdays from my job. Mm-hmm. Second thing is I'm going to have to buy you a beer. Now, who's all going to be there? Who am I buying beers for when I come up? Because I know you guys are staying at Circa, right? Yes, there will, it will be the triumvirate. Me, Josh Peterson, and Nick Grimm. <laughs> Wonderful. So does Nick drink? Does Nick drink? <laughs> <laughs> PBR mostly, but yeah, you'll have to convince him if you're going to give him something else. So if, if I want to give him a man drink, we're going to have to we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to force him to drink it. Then all right. Yeah, yeah, he'll but be no, forced uh, to do some things so, for sure. So, and will you be broadcasting to where folks can come down and see you? I I don't know what the setup looks like. I, I don't know if you have to pay entry to get in there. I assume you I I assume you do. I don't know if like you would know better than me if you can just like walk around there. Um, so so where exactly? So, well, I think we're at stadium. We're we're at the stadium swim with the big TVs and the pools. So you're going to be outside then. I would okay. yes, I, I believe that's true. All right. So because I literally I live in North Las Vegas, so I live literally about 10 minutes from the Circa. So I'll, I'll figure it out, but I'm buying all you boys a beer, at least one while you're here. Hell um, yes. So we'll get that. Out. And plus I owe Josh, like from the chief Super Bowl from the first time they beat the 49ers, I still owe him like four pizzas. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. He only let me, he only let me buy him one. When this is when I lived in Phoenix, I bought him one. And then he said the bet was over with. Because uh, I don't think he ever thought I was going to buy him one. But I, I owe the man at least, if he's not going to let me buy him more food, i got to buy him alcohol. How did you bet so four that, pizzas? I don't even understand that. So what happened was, was during that, that initial playoff run with the Chiefs, I hate the Kansas City Chiefs with every fiber of my being. Mostly it's because of my jerk-off brother, and then I had a, I had a really uh, POS uh, uncle as well. Anyway, so their happiness is derivated off of the Chiefs winning. Plus, I lived in Kansas City for about nine months, and I find them to be the most annoying fan base in the history of the free world. 
So during that run, I kept betting Josh every week that they would lose their playoff game. And as you remember, that particular year, they they come by, they end up coming back and beating everything. You know, they beat down by yeah. huge numbers, and they'd end up coming back and winning. Yeah. So I kept betting them pizzas week after week after week to where when I lost in the Super Bowl, it ended up being five pizzas. Five pizzas. Okay. Well, so that makes up, sense. I ended up getting them, I think, a pepperoni pizza from the varsity because they were the only ones that was delivered to the uh, radio station. And then Josh said after that we were good to go. Well, so now now that I know you boys are going to be in town, um, it looks like I get to buy rounds of beer for the boys on Wednesday and Thursday while you're in town. Or pizzas. So we, could, we could still carry over those pizzas as well. Who knows? Well, here's the, here's the great thing. There's two great pizza places. Down on free down in uh, downtown uh, uh, Vegas, one's called Evil Pie, and that one is predicated off of Evil Knievel. His son Robbie, before he died, they opened up this pizza shop, and you go inside at the pizza shop class bar. They got all the old um, Evil Knievel and, and Robbie Knievel memorabilia, and they got the jumps up on television, so you can relive all the jumps and what have you. But they serve kick-ass pizza. Cool. And there's another place called there down there called the rock and that's another pizza joint which is also down where you guys are and that place is awesome as well so you got that um hey we're totally blank slate so we're you know we're we're just we're looking for anything so that'll be that'll be good to have some direction well i i can definitely help you out there and like i said i i still owe josh from the super bowl whatever 53 or whatever the hell it was at that point so um I, I'm in his debt still for pizza, or I guess it's now at this point alcohol. My one quick though uh, thing about Nebraska: How can Nebraska be America's team when they're only going to be playing for three hours this week and they're going to be bounced out? Oh, oh, Joe! Joe, oh, that's my team. That's Josh's favorite basketball team. Texas A&M. No. <laughs> <laughs> I bleed Husker red. Thanks for the call, Joe. We'll talk to you next week. I'll see you next week, boys. I'll uh, call back in or uh, send a DM or something. All right. We'll get something together. But like I said, I owe you boys beer. All right. Hook it up. We'll we'll talk to you then. Joe in Vegas. Let's go. Now now we got a tour guide. We're very excited. I need a tour guide for Pittsburgh first. I'm worried about one thing at a time, Josh. We're yeah. going to be everywhere. You got to take this one weekend at a time. And so what happens? Pace yourself. So what happens if Creighton goes to the Final Four? And then all of a sudden I'm in Phoenix in the. Well, First then, weekend in April. Joe in Phoenix can take care of Joe. And that's right. We have a Joe in Phoenix as well. He might not be as hospitable. Uh, I like the backstory. I like the origin story of Joe, Joe in Vegas's hatred of the Chiefs. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Um, yeah. So we're gonna get Josh. So remember, remember last year when they put me right behind the broadcast crew for the. Creighton Baylor game in the in the uh, round of thirty two. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Doesn't they just put me right there. So we got to do th- this. Is the ultimate dream. We get Josh to get walking in Memphis, and we dress him up as Harry Potter, and he's paying off his bet live on national television behind the uh, the broadcast crew in uh, in Memphis, which will be uh, a Spiro Ditas. Oh, Spiro's my guy. Big Spiro. Jim man. Spinarkle, John Rothstein. Spiro head. That's what they call me, my friends. You are a Spiro guy. <laughs> I, I, I've always known that about you. And I always like the idea of Jim Spinarkle as well. He's got a fun name. And John Rothstein, the, you oh, know. We'll sleep in May. John, John Rothstein will be sleeping in May and he'll be walking in Memphis. <laughs> where's, uh, where's Kugler during all this? Hey, great question. Not he's to, not gotta, to ask a question that we don't be on the answer to. But. He's got to be number one. I mean, he's yeah. number one radio somewhere. So I don't know. The, the number one TV crew is, um, let's see. That would be the that would be the Iron Eagle team. They'll be in Brooklyn. 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 They'll be in Brooklyn. So they'll be a Friday Sunday deal. They have so their their teams are Northwestern FAU. Oh, Northwestern. Northwestern gets the number one broadcast crew. Boo booey. Yukon, obviously. Um, sorry, Stetson. I'm not even gonna really mention in this conversation. Um uh, Vermont and Duke. Mm. 
Mm, there's a sneaky little 13 4 if you're interested, Josh. Uh, Kevin Kugler will be in Des Moines Thursday and Saturday. Des Moines? Yeah. W- what's going on in Des Moines? Oh, is this a different year that I'm looking at? <laughs> this would have been last year. Update your website, Westwood. Is he coming to Omaha? I don't know. They, I, don't I got so excited that I finally found it because it should be easier to find. Mm. I just read the first thing I saw. My apologies. Oh, by the way, quick mix up. Uh, Joe in Vegas is Joe in Phoenix. Oh, they're the same person. They're the same. I forgot that Joe in Phoenix moved to Joe in Vegas in October and he changed his Twitter handle and it was very confusing to me, but I just now remembered that. I can't keep track of all of Joe's wheelings and dealings. <laughs> Joe's in Vegas, Joe's in Phoenix. Who knows what's going on? Anyway, Nebraska, <laughs> are they America's team? Mm. Are they America's team? Now, Joe in Vegas slash Phoenix says they cannot be if they lose their first game, which is true. That is true. But if they win once, if they win on Friday night, did you see the buzz that was generated by what Nebraska did to Indiana on Friday night and what they were doing to Illinois on Saturday afternoon? That was not just local. Casey was a star. That was not just local. People were talking about Keisei Tomonaga, as we predicted months and months and months ago. Some did, anyway. Some who tried to, some who did not cancel them. I didn't cancel them. I'm the mascot, Connor. That's true. You but, go over there with the Blue Jays. My my complaint about the, I don't know. We're ten years removed from when Nebraska last made the NCAA tournament, and. That team that they had in 2014, they were not particularly, they weren't particularly likable. I can't, I can't, do do you agree with that? Because I I, I feel like I'm going to get flamed for that. But like, that was not a particular, obviously they were really likable to the people around here because they made the NCAA tournament. They don't make the NCAA tournament ever. Husker fans, you're biased. But like trying to view it from a 40,000 foot view, I don't know that that team was particularly likable. They played a, they played a, a bad style of basketball, quote unquote bad. Obviously, they won games and they got hot in February and March when they made the NCAA tournament. But, you know, they, they, there wasn't a whole lot of like offensive rhythm, flow. There wasn't dudes where you're like, whoa, who is this guy? And they're about to take over. Like, Taran Petaway was not that guy. Um, Siobhan Shields, who I love, was not that guy. Walter Pitchford was probably the closest that they could get. And they never really got the chance to to really see that run come through. By the way, Westwood One just said on Twitter that Kevin Kugler is going to Omaha. Kugler and Bardo. Are, are they listening to the show right now? They might be. They, maybe the person who's tweeting all this stuff is sitting right, uh, right outside our room right now. In case you missed it, it's, here are our crews for this weekend. It's, it's very, I did miss it. Uh, yeah, in case you ah! missed it. Josh did miss it. Um, But anyway, this team is infinity more likable than that team was 10 years ago. And it's because they play a, they play a fun brand. They, they D up. They are tough. They fight through stuff like they're older, they're experienced, and they have Kese Tomanaga, probably most. And, and like the Tim Miles, the Tim Miles side story was fun back then. Remember, you have to flash your, you have to put yourself in the shoes of ten years ago, and you know it was still weird and kind of fun when he was tweeting at halftime. You know, so like they were they were fun from that perspective, but it was because of that. Like everybody nationally loves and respects Fred Hoiberg, definitely. You know, so. And then they have, and then they have Casey Tomanaga, who the reaction coming out of what they did on Friday night was incredible. Them talking to, oh, I watched every single video of the people that they interviewed in the stands who were like, "I don't have anything to do with anything, but I am here for this because I have discovered that Casey Tomanaga exists, and I will, and I will find him for wherever he ends up." So they kind of will be like if they win, dependent on if they win. And 
especially if they do so convincingly on Friday, which I do think mm-hmm. there is a chance that they could do. Hello. They could really get rolling. Um, they'll be a, a very anticipated game with them in Houston, which I don't think Nebraska will win, by yeah. the way. But, but people will be rooting for them because we're kind of sick of Houston. Mm-hmm. They're a letdown team in the NCAA tournament. Not fun to watch. Not a particularly fun brand mm-hmm. of basketball. Um, Nebraska, very fun brand of basketball. Yeah. So and they'll be playing Houston as we said. The so it'll be a advantageous time slot for Nebraska because you know everybody will put want to put the one seed at a good time. They got a bit of an America's team vibe to them. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. So they kind of are. Just to answer our own question, Mina Kimes is in. I mean, if Mina Kimes is in, that's how you know. Mm-hmm. Josh is keeping us up to date on all things Mina Kimes. I'm the source. You are. Mina you Kimes you are. News. You always let us know when Mina Kimes is doing something. She should be celebrated. Thank you. Josh. She's going to be the Seahawks GM one day. <laughs> All right, we'll come back. Um, still plenty to get into, including things that happened in the NFL over the weekend. The Chicago Bears would like you you to forget that they traded Justin Fields for nothing. For nothing. Nothing. Not even a single thing. And there's a quarterback battle in Pittsburgh that. More NCAA tournament thoughts, stories of the NCAA tournament, how how things line up for the Blue Jays, and plenty more on the Connor Happer Show in 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. It's the most time-honored tradition to start the weekend, grabbing a cold one from a local Nebraska brewery. Let's be real here. It's cold outside, and you don't want to drink the same boring beer as those Hawkeye fans. Drink Nebraska brewed beer, cider, or seltzers instead. Each week, we're putting the spotlight on a unique Nebraska brewery with One Beer Friday. Share your brew on social media with the hashtag One Beer Friday, and you'll be entered to win a $25 gift card to a local Nebraska brewery. Nebraska is the good life with great beer. Click Nebraska.beer to learn more. When you keep a car for a long time, it becomes a classic. When you keep your air conditioner for a long time, it becomes, well, let's just say it doesn't get better with age. Call Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and have your old air conditioner checked out. If it's needed, you can have a brand new carrier air conditioner installed in no time with fast and easy financing. When the other companies send salesmen, Standard sends qualified technicians. It's just part of the way we do the things we do. Carrier, turn to the experts. When it comes to concrete repair, Everlevel has some serious game. Coach Greg McDermott here to coach you on why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. They've got the fundamentals to fix your cracked and uneven concrete, and their products will give you the best defense against future damage. It's a fraction of the price compared to replacement, and their solutions come with a long-term transferable warranty. Working with Everlevel is a slam dunk. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today for your free inspection. College basketball's biggest tournament is coming, and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa. It's sports betting the way it should be. High betting limits, tight money line splits, exceptional customer service, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all of the March action at CircaSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7600. Get more with Murphy Tractor. Each of our 29 locations offers new, used, and rental John Deere construction equipment, an extensive parts inventory, as well as other complimentary products. We also have a full team of Capstone certified technicians with field service capabilities. Let Murphy Tractor be your first choice for your construction equipment needs. Visit us online at murphytractor.com. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus a hundred bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah! Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. If we've learned anything from the headlines, it's that unexpected things happen too often. Those in charge say everything's fine. Stop noticing. But you know better. 
and your gut knows that time is short to prepare for what's around the corner next. My Patriot Supply has helped over 2 million families become more self-reliant and is the company Americans trust to prepare. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com and secure their best-selling three-month emergency food kits. Each contains tasty breakfasts, lunches, and dinners, averaging over 2,000 calories per day. Get at least one food kit for each family member. For a limited time, save $200, plus get free shipping on all their Ready Hour three-month emergency food kits. You're not ready if it's not Ready Hour Foods. At My Patriot Supply, you can also get solar power generators, water filtration units, emergency medical supplies, and heirloom seeds. Shop MyPatriotSupply.com today. MyPatriotSupply.com Hey, pet parents. With Progressive's collision coverage, you get extra protection for your cat or dog because there's nothing worse than seeing your pet hurt. Like when you see their face after accidentally stepping on their tail, you say, I'm so sorry, Mr. Pickles. But as you kiss his nose and rub his little belly welly, you know Mr. Pickles is thinking, you betrayed me. Anywho, Progressive pays up to $1,000 in vet bills if your pet is injured in an auto accident. Learn more at Progressive.com and watch where you step. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Collision coverage subject to policy terms not available in all states. Hey, check this out. The AP polls out. Always is on a Monday, Connor. This matters. Everybody's seed is decided, but the AP poll is out. Thank you to Bleeds Jays Blue, who tweeted this out. Otherwise, I would have never seen it. Uh, oh, Creighton tweeted it out, too. Uh, apparently, they decided to do an AP poll this week. Second highest end-of-season AP finish. Well, it's not end-of-season. There's still one left. Well, There's one pre-tournament. There's one post-tournament. But all the narratives are, are going to be post-tournament. Uh, UConn goes in as the number one team in the country, Houston, Purdue, Iowa State, number four in the AP poll, number eight on the bracket on the old seed list there. Tennessee is the fourth one. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, North Carolina is the fourth one. They're number five in the AP poll. Um, and then Tennessee, six, Auburn, seven, Marquette, eight, Arizona, nine, Illinois, 10, and Creighton, 11. Right in front of blue blood programs like Kentucky Ooh. and Duke. Second best final AP ranking ever, says Creighton men's basketball. Hmm. Final pre-tournament. It does not say that. Well, I mean, this, yes, is, this is not the final AP I, poll. I, I, there I will agree. still be one more AP poll. You tell Rob after the season, right? I think I'm right. I don't know. I think I'm right about this. Uh, started watching the NCAA tournament. Long Beach State head coach Dan Monson, who was fired on Monday, a week ago today, uh, led his team to win the Big West tournament and is now in the NCAA field as a 15 seed as they take on Arizona. So if you're looking for something funny to happen, You'll watch Long Beach State and Arizona play in Salt Lake City on Thursday. Well, good thing the Pac-12 is a very strong basketball conference with no question marks surrounding it or its teams. That's right. The Pac-12, which does not exist anymore, got more teams into the field than the Big East did. (laughs) They signed off. (laughs) Pac-12 network. (laughs) Yeah, they were like, this is it. Goodbye. Goodbye. We're not. We're definitely not doing any baseball games. So see you later. See ya. This is literally it for us as a conference. All right. Here's a question for you. We haven't talked much Jays yet today. They'll take on Akron on Thursday morning, the third game of the NCAA tournament. Wow. Too early. The third game of the NCAA tournament. Um, yes. Too early, Josh. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. It's a built-in excuse for when Creighton loses. They could go to Akron's backyard. I got a guy have LeBron James rooting against him. Just a kid from Akron. Just a kid from Akron. Who definitely would have went It's to very Akron. sad how the committee stacks things up against Creighton. Mm-hmm. Um, but with that being said, sarcastically, by the way, Creighton ends up in the Midwest region. Purdue's the one there. Tennessee's the two. The Jays are the three. KU, a beat-up KU, is the four. Um, I will preface my question with this. This region seems gettable. This region seems gettable. And so I'll ask you the question. All right. What does Creighton have to do in order for this to be a success? 
It's amazing. Oh, I, I, I will say this. It's amazing that we, in the span of three years, we went from, man, Creighton has got to break through this ceiling and make a sweet 16. And they did, although it was anticlimactic because it was kind of bubbly and it was against Ohio, but they made a sweet 16 and then they got drilled by Gonzaga. But then they did that. And then they went back to the NCAA tournament again and they, and they, and they won a game when they were, they weren't supposed to. And they took Kansas all the way to the wire in that year. Once again, I still maintain that that team probably should not have made the NCAA. Tur- well, not from a, like a resume perspective, but like the, personnel wise, that team, it's hard to understand how they made a run, that, the run that they did. And then you had last year where I think, I mean, remember Creighton was a six seed last year. People forget. They, people do forget, Josh. I was worried about them beating NC State in the first round last year because they had the one guy who was crazy and he went off for 40 points and he was dunking <laughs> on everybody. I mean, he was insane. And, um, you know, there was the the demons of Baylor and that whole thing, and they finally released those because they had to slow it up, that whole thing. And they kind of broke through that window and them, then yeah. meeting them in the Sweet 16 was – National powerhouse Princeton. They got a whole offense named after him. And they went to the Elite Eight and they, um, you know, what unfolded there unfolded. <laughs> and so now they're a three seed. They're the second highest, or the, they're the tied for the highest seed that they've ever been in program history back with the 2014 team that was a three seed. And they got drilled by Baylor in that second game. It was a very, very disappointing ending. But I'm looking at this thing, and I'm looking at the bottom right corner of the bracket, and I'm thinking, whoa. Akron, and then Oregon, who stole a bid. Obviously, you know, there's a connection there with Dana. And then South Carolina, who has been good all year, um, but did not. I mean, they were they were the team this year that went like undefeated in the non-con because they didn't really do anything. They did. They decided to not, I mean, they didn't go undefeated. They lost to Clemson in the non-con. The only team with a pulse that they played in the non-con was Clemson and they lost to them. And then they held serve, beat Tennessee on the road in the conference, you know, beat Kentucky, like took care of the, took care of the business they needed to take care of in order to get to where they wanted to go. But nobody looks at South Carolina and says, oh boy, this is the team to watch out for to make a run. So it looks relatively clear. I'm not saying free and easy. It's not easy to win NCAA tournament games. But as I see it, it looks like at the very least a Sweet 16 appearance to me. And it looks like it would be disappointing (laughs) if they didn't make the Sweet 16. As the seed line dictates. Just as it was in 2014. I'm I'm not breaking any news. The seed line tell you this, but even if you look at it and you look at the six and you look at the 11, you're like, man, maybe, you know, I wouldn't have wanted to play BYU right in the, in the second game of the, in the, in the round of 32. Um, maybe even Texas tech would have been a little bit scarier or something like that. Admittedly, we don't know much about South Carolina. Uh Yeah. Well, I'm filling out my bracket last night, but I know they uh, don't move very fast mm-hmm. and yeah. they've been able to, you know, they, they've been able to kind of make some room for themselves in a conference that doesn't play defense by playing a little bit of defense. Just every now and then they Creighton plays a game where it just doesn't look quite right. Now, sometimes they even win that game. Like I've, I've, I've tried to balance Connor be the yin to his yang throughout the home stretch of the season here. And even I'm filling out this bracket last night going, okay, I don't think Kansas is healthy. I don't think in Zag is as good as they've always been. I, I, Tennessee, we, I mean, we talked about last week, how they're going to choke because that's what Tennessee does in all athletics. Do I really have Purdue and Creighton? Uh, something must be wrong, right? And I, I go back and I check it, and I'm like, I don't know. They, I mean, they said it on the selection show. They were like, 
I think Creighton's the team out of this region. Like if you just take the top four against the top four in every region, let's just let's just thought exercise this real quick. Ooh. So in the East, UConn, Iowa State, Illinois, and Auburn. Super strong. Yeah, that's, that's super strong. Decent. You're gonna like that. The West, North Carolina, Arizona, um, Baylor, Baylor, and Alabama. That's one of those that could go to any of those four, I think. Yeah, good, but all have a rather large question mark. In the South, Houston, Marquette, um, Kentucky, and Duke. Top three strong, right? Yeah. Top three strong. Yeah. I. It would be hard for me to imagine uh, somebody not in those top three that came out of that region. It's always hard to imagine they you know, it's always hard to imagine like a 10 making a run out of that thing. But, you know, Houston's really good. And Marquette's really good if they have Tyler Kolick. And I think Kentucky is scary. And then it, and then in Creighton's in the Midwest, it's it's Purdue, who everybody wonders about this time of year. Tennessee, who's coach, everybody wonders about this time of year. Creighton, who now has broken through and nobody really wonders about them this time of year anymore. And they've been one of the darlings of the season anyway. And Kansas, who I don't think anybody expects to get to win more than two games. They weren't consistent before the tournament. Yeah. And now they're in uh, un- inconsistent oh, like at the, at and the, unhealthy. At the very most two games. Yeah. Right. For Kansas. And so I look at it, I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I can pretty reasonably see Creighton in the final four. <laughs> But I want to be careful because I don't think that's like the expectation. I I, I don't. Right. That's that's not what I expect. But it does set up, so it set. might be a bit of a disappointment if they don't reach it, which is amazing to think about. Just as it was last year. I mean, they. My thought last year on them, after they lost that game, was more about what because they would have they would have played FAU with a chance to go to the national championship yeah. game. And then it would have been UConn, who was obviously a different team, but they beat them. Green yeah. could have won the national championship last they year. They know them, right. at least, right? Like, and, and so I think this team, from a personnel perspective, and usually that's what wins the tournament, right? Personnel, people always talk about guard play. It's really just personnel, right? Like, who has the best players? Because stuff's going to break down in the NCAA tournament. I think they match up with just about anybody in the country. There's not a team that I would definitively be like, nope, I don't want the, I don't want any piece of that. And so that is their ceiling. They can win the national championship. I have a bracket in my hand, and I'm saying that Creighton can win the national championship. If I had them in the Elite Eight, wondering if I should move them into the Final Four, then Connor definitely yeah. has them in the final four. And on top of that, it's hard for me to imagine them not being in the second weekend. Right. It's hard. It's it's hard for me to imagine. That feels like the baseline. Like it's harder for me to imagine that now than it was in 2014 when they when they had Doug McDermott, but you knew what kind of team they were. Right. It was going to have to go pretty well for them. There was going to be they were going to have to shoot it well, right? They were really heavily slanted on the offensive end. This team's just not that. It's not. So, yeah. It's, your season is going to be what you end up being in the NCAA tournament. Um, and they they have a lot out in front of them. Do you have a bit of a sour taste in your mouth from the Providence thing in the in, in the Big East tournament? That's never really hurt them before. That's never really mattered. True. Um, and so I think more about what they have been for the last month. Sands won St. John's game at Madison Square Garden, and Sands won Providence game also at Madison Square Garden. They've been one of the best teams in the country for an entire month. No. Why can't they why can't they go to the final four? I like, you know, I, I don't see any reason why they can't. Madison and, Square and I'm Garden saying this with a bracket in my hand. Madison Square Garden isn't in Pittsburgh, right? That is correct. Okay. And also not the host of the NIT finals this year, as we learned earlier. We've learned a lot on today's show. 
Um, let's get to an email here. Mm. Here is Brian. I'll bet it's praising you for your Creighton take. <laughs> I actually don't know which way this is going to oh, go. Okay. Uh, Brian on the Equal Bank inbox. Hi, Brian. I've heard Creighton fans calling for Purdue because they want to see Edie versus Kalkbrenner. Why? Edie's three inches taller and 30 pounds heavier than Kalkbrenner. When was the last time Kalkbrenner went up against someone significantly bigger than him? Lob play won't be there. That's how Creighton breaks any and all scoring slumps they have. Disagree. Uh, to Edie, it's a great play that they have in their back pocket. They haven't really done it much this year because teams have iced him out of it. Uh, Edie, to Edie, Kalkbrenner is just another short guy, <laughs> and Purdue is a better three-point shooting team than Purdue. I think you meant Creighton. Creighton does not want Purdue, says that gentleman, Brian. Yeah, I just, I think with Creighton's athleticism, just if we're doing Edie versus Kalkbrenner, many are saying his athleticism, um, is w- would be a problem for Edie. E- Edie's gotten better in that category. So let me let me by the way fact check this real quick. Creighton thirty one point six three point shooting percentage, fifty six in the country. Um, and Purdue is the number two three-point shooting team in the country so far this year. That's the thing I, I like. So I, I'm, I'm speaking out of both sides of mouth, my mouth a little bit. They are a, kind of a wagon offensively because they have all the answers. Purdue, they, um, they obviously have Edie, who's a great safety net for them and is a great scoring threat, but I think their guard play is really good. Like so, And keep in mind, we're, we'd be talking about a matchup in – the um in the elite eight right this is to go to the final four so it's a little bit further down the road but yeah i, I think from a personnel perspective creighton could be right there with that team they they could match ed i think i would i would you know that'd be a good game i would watch it <laughs> with a chance to go to the final four yeah but chances are you know maybe it doesn't end up one versus three but that's what Creighton has out in front of them because they are the team now that's supposed to get there. At the very least, to the Sweet 16. Supposed to play a few games mm-hmm. down the stretch. Mm-hmm. Greg's supposed to get closer to Dana's record. Uh, Jeff says you could have Shaq go against Kalkbrenner and Hap would find a way to think he mm. could take him. Well, that's the uh, beautiful part of having a versatile big man. Can move a little bit. Shaq or Kalkbrenner? Who you got, Connor? Give me Kalkbrenner. Give me Iguadala. He did it, guys. He did it. All right. Uh, yeah. Don't put that on the TikTok camera. <laughs> don't aggregate me. All right. We'll come back. Warm next on 1620 The Zone. Previously on the crossover. All right. Let's see. So Danville Dairy Daddies. Look at that. Look at that horny cow. Look at the eyes on this bad boy. <laughs> giving the eyes uh, there, there's something weird about that uh, no, i can't say he is Never a bull mind. this is a dairy daddy oh his name is mick creamy got it perfect mornings with sharp and hanley the connor happer show on sportsman like conduct 6 a to 6 p 16 20 the zone your omaha area forecast from the godfather's pizza weather center and ketv news watch 7 on 1620 the zone Bright skies for your Monday afternoon with temperatures remaining a little bit chilly with a high today in Omaha, 43, but mainly feeling like the 30s. Northerly winds possible at about 15 to 20 miles an hour with very high fire danger for parts of eastern Nebraska and western Iowa. Clear skies stick around tonight, cold with a low of 32. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. Are you a delivery driver looking for a better job opportunity? Post Coffee is a local family-owned coffee, water, and vending company that has been in business since 1972. We are growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit hostcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Post Coffee is always roasting something good for you. That's Mike saying good morning. It's the best he can do right now. Yeah, not a cloud in the sky. What Mike could use is a fresh start and Irish Spring Body Wash. 
the fresh scent of Irish Spring and those sensational Irish Spring suds are just the reset Mike needs. Now he's ready to go to work. It's Sunday. Irish Spring, when the spring hits you, you're ready. Pick up Irish Spring at Walmart today. If we've learned anything from the headlines, it's that unexpected things happen too often. Those in charge say everything's fine. Stop noticing. But you know better, and your gut knows that time is short to prepare for what's around the corner next. My Patriot Supply has helped over 2 million families become more self-reliant and is the company Americans trust to prepare. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com and secure their best-selling three-month emergency food kits. Each contains tasty breakfasts, lunches, and dinners, averaging over 2,000 calories per day. Get at least one food kit for each family member. For a limited time, save $200, plus get free shipping on all their Ready Hour three-month emergency food kits. You're not ready if it's not Ready Hour Foods. At My Patriot Supply, you can also get solar power generators, water filtration units, emergency medical supplies, and heirloom seeds. Shop MyPatriotSupply.com today. MyPatriotSupply.com I wish I could get this stupid jar open. Jars can be tough, am I right? Who are you? And how'd you get in my kitchen? It's me, Flo, and I'm here to grant your wish of easily switching to Progressive and helping you get a discount that honors the time spent with your previous insurer. Great, but what does that have to do with getting this jar open? Nothing. So you can't open this? Oh, I just do insurance. Jars, I leave to the professionals. Sign up for Progressive and opt into more savings. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Not available in all states or situations. Hey, baseball fans, ready to catch all the action this season? Tickets for Less is your ultimate ticket destination for the best seats at the best prices. As an authorized marketplace of MLB tickets, Tickets for Less offers transparent, upfront pricing, and no added service fees at checkout. So shop Royals, Chasers, and more at ticketsforless.com or visit their Omaha office at 145th and West Center Road or call now at 402-398-1999. With Tickets for Less, you'll always get the best customer service and you can save even more now when you use my promo code THEZONE at checkout today. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. We got a couple cool things coming up for you here to get involved win stuff stuff during large basketball tournament 2024 um so we're doing a, a what, what i think is a pretty good idea so when we get to the second weekend when there's only a certain amount of teams left like less than 20 more than 15 Okay, I follow. Right. So when, when we get to the second weekend, we're going to pick a bunch of people from a pile, but you have to enter to get into the pile, right? And then each of those... <laughs> so there will be people assigned to a team. Yeah. You enter to get the, in the pile. Enter to get in the pile. We pick. And then we pick... More than 15, less than 20 to get in to get assigned to a team on a second weekend. Right? That's really sweet of us. And what then, did you say? and then the team that wins, the person connected to that team, the corresponding person connected to that team will win $1,620. Oh. So if you want to get into the pile, Go to 1620thezone.com right now. 
You want to be in you the wanna, pile. You want to be in the pile. You, uh, unfortunately, like this is a day that can be really overwhelming for people because you're starting, you're starting up your bracket challenges, mm -hmm. and you really don't want to think a week ahead. But we're giving you a, a new lease on life next week. You know your bracket is going to be toasted after this weekend. Mm -hmm. So get in the pile, and you still got a chance to win money on the second weekend, even when your bracket is SOL after this weekend. Because we'll pull, it definitely yeah, will be. It will. We'll pull yeah. your name out of the pile. You'll be handcuffed to a team for the remainder of the yes. tournament. Yes. They win, you win. That was a lot better than whatever yeah. I just tried. Right. Thank you. Baymon says, this is very complicated. It is. <laughs> it's actually not. It, I'm just explaining it complicated because there's certain things that I can't say thanks to our overlords at the NCAA. Who we love. Who we love. We love. Love them. We love. We love dearly. The pile boys, Mike says. Um, also, us. he says, hi, everyone. So Trev Alberts, am I right? I actually wanted to talk about that. So Trev Alberts, you know, Trev, Trev Alberts, former Good Riddance athletic director. Well, I got a lot of... Where did Sip land on that? I got a lot of uh, people who who made contact with me over the weekend who were like, that that was an interesting interview with Sipple. And we were going to not call him. We were going to not call him. We almost were like, ah, a little late. Maybe we just bang. Ah, whatever. He came in hot. He was like, Good Riddance. We don't need him. He said Nebraska's better off without him. And I heard from a lot of people over the weekend um, who kind of echoed those thoughts. I sort of expected the, um, I, I guess, the, the hot intensity, the edge that, has been, that was kind of displayed toward Trev Alberts this weekend, uh, or at least when the news came out last week. Um, I kind of expected that to to kind of fizzle out as attention got, you know, set back on the basketball teams. Obviously, the bracket turned out the way it did, so th that wasn't going to happen. No, no. But I don't think it was going to happen anyway. I don't know, like I, to the point where it even kind of turned my tide a little bit. Like I, I have, I, I've started to. You know, I, I'm not I'm not rethinking like Trev Albert's tenure here or anything like that. I still think he did a good job, and I think it's totally fair to want a new stadium. You know, to to want an improvement to your stadium, um, and he wanted people to work with on that. But I, I I just heard from more and more people who are like, this is increasingly frustrating that he didn't really see this through and that he jumped ship. And it's hard for me to not like agree. It's hard it's hard for me to not look at that and be like, yeah, that that is what happened. That guy wants what he wants. And if he doesn't see a path to getting it, then yeah, I think they, you know, he's going to take a look around. And um, I, I'm starting to kind of see eye to eye a little bit. And you hear from people who have like harbored this, you know, this frustration against Trev for all, for a long time, people from Omaha, you know? Oh, yeah. Who were basically like, hey, look, I told you, you know, I've been sitting here this entire time. Was there something that happened there? I told Some you. unpleasantness? I told you, I told you, snake. Snake, snake, snake all the time. That's what he does. And it's 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 hard to not look at the situation that we've been given and say, damn, that is kind of what happened. And then he hops on Twitter. Like he's clearly enjoying this a little bit, right? He knows. He knows what happens every time he tweets. I don't I don't know if it's that or if it's more like he's getting bad advice and, and someone is of the belief, well, I can't say nothing. I don't know. No. You, you actually can say nothing. You could. And, and I in don't, fact, should. I actually don't think that anybody could tell him anything at this point. It doesn't. Okay. It's, it's, you know. And so last that night, he, for the course. last night, he fires off a tweet that says he can't make this up. Congratulations to coach. Taylor and Coach Williams. Those are the uh, women's basketball coaches at Texas A&M and Nebraska. He did the same thing when it was Buzz Williams and Coach Hoiberg, um, which he like deleted maybe a couple times and then responded to a Nebraska fan who said, 
third time's a charm, LOL. And he said, my bad, not good at this smiley face. <laughs> and basically every time Tweeting that, he, yeah, every time that he acknowledges, um, you know, Nebraska or Texas A&M, I mean, people are just getting, just going after him. So he's very aware of these things. He's very aware of what's going on. Did Matt Rule smooth some of that out today? Hey, let's move on. Nope. No, you don't think so? Nope. Uh, by the time he admitted to knowing before the fan base, and that means really that's that, that, that means he was keeping something from us. Is is that has that been the takeaway? I haven't seen any of the discourse. No, but it's, it, it always is. Hey, whoever could have seen that Scott Frost might have liked not working more than working? Gee, I don't know (laughs) anyone who looked at it, but it it was up to us to tell you that, I guess. Oh, so you're just applying the logic that people are using against the media to the Trev thing now? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. That's cool. Making some assumptions, some intellectual leaps? Yeah. I I think by the time we got to last night, I I was super ready just to get back to basketball and start talking about basketball again. Nah, I'm petty. Yeah. It's going to be fun if you win. Yep. It's all about, it's, like it or not, it has definitely become a lot about Trev Alberts going into this weekend. I would I would be willing to say too much, but, yeah. hey, these this is the hand we're dealt. Yep. Uh, Brian, by the way, says three hours in and still not even a quick mention of UNO Hockey. Uh, oh. actually, yes, I apologize for that, Brian. Good, Let's do this. Thank you. Good call by you. Want to produce the show this week? <laughs> well, neither of us are going to be here. <laughs> it sounds like. Oh man, they blew that game Friday. They were three nothing on Colorado College. Blew a three zero lead. Lost four three in overtime. And I thought they were done so. And then they they win Saturday. They win Sunday. Proved they were the better team of the weekend. Moved to the next round of the NCHC playoffs they're... they are going to the frozen face off that's right they're frozen and where who will they play Say but clown. but who else josh no they're playing um oh. they're they're playing north dakota oh aren't they i don't know that's what i'm looking i'm looking at a bracket uh it recedes it does recede which means they're playing north dakota okay yeah so, so DU's the two, St. Cloud's the three, North Dakota's the one, Omaha's the four. Great. So that Get them again. is another thing we have to look forward to if you're interested, if you're into that sort of thing. Friday. Friday's a big day for oh, me, Josh. Man, I'll be eating oh, a sandwich okay. with French fries on it, mm. Nebraska basketball, um, both men and women, and Creighton women, right? I think that's all Friday. I don't. Yes. I haven't got the women's tournament straight yet. And then the women's uh, games are very late. Don't worry. And then the you know hockey at four on CBS Sports Network. CBS Sports Network. Not. I mean, it's great that it's on TV. They do a fine job on uh, the radio side, but I like seeing it too. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I mean, we could say that we're we're, we're okay. all adults here, Josh. Okay. okay. We we're all adults here. Of course, we encourage you to listen to the radio if you're in your car. But yes, we understand that. Television is television. Oh, this is this is one this is one deal. This isn't a best of three anymore. Correct. Oh, correct. So that was pretty sweet to see that over the weekend. Taking two out of three for Colorado College. See ya. Bye bye. And moving on up. Got a chance. It feels like now. Admittedly, no. Now people will tell me to talk about hockey, knowing that I'm not the right guy to talk yeah. about hockey. But and then just like you, say something about it. And then when you do, and then when I talk about hockey and I'm wrong about everything, though they're like, "What the hell happened here? Why'd you even try?" So, admittedly, not like totally in tune with what's going on. But but I do know this. It seems like they're playing their best hockey at the right time. It's <laughs> I mean, as evidenced by them being just you know absolutely flaming hot over the last couple of weekends. You know, beating North Dakota the way that they did, beating Colorado College the way that they did, and then taking two out of three from them again at mm-hmm. their barn. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, barn, look at you. At, at, at their rink, at their house, no, whatever you, you want. No, you were correct. Whatever you want to call it, at their barn. Um, so, yeah, uh, it, it seems like things are setting up here for the Mavs, which is, I mean, pretty good. I know I know that they've been they've been kind of beat up with the sickness, too. Wow. 
they were not down with the sickness. They were it was it was not good. Oh, okay. They they had some real sickness going through that locker room. They found a way, hot as hockey dudes do. Those guys are just yeah. wired different. Yeah, you can't tell them nothing. Uh, by the way, hockey dad providing some encouragement on Twitter. Uh, if you screw up, no big deal. We'll help. They are by far playing their best hockey. <laughs> Nailed it. Good job, Connor. One for one on hockey takes today. But yeah, that's awesome to see. Awesome to see. So yes, we have a lot to root for this week. I have a hockey take uh, buried in the what to watch segment later. So oh. see if we can go two for two but uh, at the end of the show. All right. Is it about the Chell? Is it about Chell? Or is it about co- college hockey? Chell, yes. Chell. That's what they call NHL, Chell. Chell. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Chell take. Okay. Josh has Chell take coming up in about 40 minutes. Very excited for that. We'll come back with Sam McEwen, who um, somebody asked us earlier, that we to ask Sam why he's lobbing all these softball questions to Matt Rule. What did Matt Rule ever do wrong? <laughs> he was just in Scotland playing golf when his whole world fell apart. What did you know and when did you know it? <laughs> so Sam joins next on 1620 The Zone, Josh, but first. Yes, 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 we are indeed here. From upsets to buzzer beaters, nothing compares to college basketball. In March, but sometimes you end up on the wrong side. Sometimes you got a nice little upset that's all cooked up and you have all the makings and you go right down the to the wire and your beloved 14 seed is not able to take down the three. So you end up being wrong and everybody else. Sometimes you take chances that you just don't cash in on. That's where FanDuel Sportsbook comes into play because they're giving you a no sweat bet, baby. Maybe you got it all cooked up and you fall just a little bit short, but FanDuel's there to protect you with a no-sweat bet until March 20th. It doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or if you already have an account. That's right. Everybody gets a no-sweat bet. Bonus bets back if your bet doesn't win. So you can use your no-sweat bet on whichever you'd like to, even a college basketball parlay. So head to FanDuel.com, the FanDuel Sportsbook app. If you don't already have it, FanDuel.com slash Happer. Get in on that action and make every moment more with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, it's time for you to get that deal. 21 and over, President in Iowa. Refund issued is now withdrawable. Bonus bets, which expire seven days after receipt. Max refund, $5. Unless otherwise specified restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Healing problem, call 1-800-BETS-OFF. For the Jays, the Huskers, and even you Jayskers, we are 1620 The, the Zone. Zone. Oddly... He's interesting because he's so uninteresting. He is the most uninteresting man in the world. Hi, I'm Bob Berger. Don't settle for anyone more interesting. Let's get to work on your business and personal taxes, payroll and employee benefits, QuickBooks and retirement planning. Call me. Call Berger, Elliott, and Pritchard CPAs at 402-551-1919 or visit BEPCPA.com. If you're looking for a safe and reliable vehicle to get you through all types of winter weather and more, Baxter Subaru has you covered. Symmetrical all-wheel drive comes standard on nearly all Subaru models and provides you better traction, improved stability, and maximized performance on wet and snowy roads. So hop in the driver's seat of a new Outback, Forester, or Crosstrek now at Baxter Subaru Omaha. Shop our great sales and service deals now during the Subaru A Lot to Love event at BaxterSubaruOmaha.com. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze, and right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. 
We're fortunate that we can give our daughters everything they need to grow and learn, but not every child can focus on classes and play dates. Nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. face hunger. That's one in six. School lunch might be their only meal each day, and it's heartbreaking to imagine any child going to bed hungry. We're dreaming of a perfect day when kids can smile, play, and just be kids without worrying about where their next meal will come from. Feeding America is working to make that perfect day a reality. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste. That food is given to families and children in need. Being a kid should be about doing things that make an ordinary day extraordinary. Learning to play an instrument, building a sandcastle, hosting tea parties. Hunger should never be an obstacle to growing up. You can help end childhood hunger in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. It's mulch better at Lanahaw. Planning to wake up your tired yard for spring? Make your landscape the envy of the neighborhood with mulch from Lanahaw's Garden Center, where quality is always a priority. Convenient pickup or delivery available. Lanahaw Nurseries, 192nd and Center. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZ and Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. I'm looking at a blank, a blank bracket. So many possibilities. Who might go all the way to the national championship game? Who might win the national championship game? That doesn't actually matter. Because the real fun is the friends we make along the way. In those first two days, one of our friends, who will certainly get every pick right this weekend, Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald, joins us down the 42 Degrees of Source Hotline. Hi, Sam. Hello, Connor. How are you? Good. You got any hot beats on like fourteen plus seeds for uh, for for this bracket this weekend? That's a good question. Uh, you know, there's usually one, right? There's usually uh, one. There's usually one. No, I mean, I, I I'm sure Iowa State's not thrilled to be playing South Dakota State. I you know I think that's probably not the game they were hoping. Um, you know, SDSU will have fans there. I don't know how many, but they'll have fans. Yeah. They'll be you know, drowned out by by their own by Iowa State fans, though. They will, um, but you know that's that's probably not the preferred uh, matchup for them. Uh, I, I think it could be a year where you know everybody kind of kind of gets through it. And, you know what's funny? I kind of think the round. same thing. It, it's it's weird because we we talked about the selection process and and um, you know all those bubble teams who got their bids stolen at the end, and and so what happens is. There's some, you know, worse teams who might not have deserved to be there that made their way into the field. That could end up being, you know, making it a little bit chalky, I guess, in the first couple of weekends. But we theorize these things and then it all blows up on us on Thursday and Friday. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm I'm probably taking all at least three and all maybe all four eleven seats. Ooh. So, okay. Um New Mexico, Oregon. Uh, Duquesne, and then I can't remember who Texas Tech's playing, but NC State. Um, yeah, there, there's a good chance I will uh, take all four of them. So you're you're locking in for a for a Creighton, Oregon, Dana Altman, Greg McDermott matchup in Pittsburgh. Probably, and that is, I mean, it's not as much to do with Oregon as it is, you know, South Carolina, Clemson, BYU, and Texas Tech. I, I'm not I a believer in South Carolina either. No, I'm not a believer in Clemson. Uh, and, you know, BYU, I mean, they had a nice season in the Big 12. I'll give them credit where it's due. I just, I question how good they're going to be. Uh, Duquesne, I know what they can do. They're very tough, very physical. Um, you know, BYU's got to go out there early. That could be a that could be a tough matchup. It won't stun me if Illinois has me some too. moments against Moorhead State. Yep. Because uh, they're, you know... They're inconsistent in their effort. <laughs> um, if there's one fourteen that I would I would eye, it would be that one. Yeah, they're not inconsistent in their, their talent. Um, and Taron Shannon, you know, and I know it's controversial that he's even playing, but he he's the one guy that that brings it for them, you know. And so he usually you know, he, he he basically saved Illinois against Nebraska because that game was about lost. And he just kept coming and coming, and 
and by the game's end, well, you know, he's the best guy on the floor and all the rest. So um, that's one to watch. But, yeah, I, I don't, you know, I don't know. I think it's going to be a fun tournament. I don't know that it's going to be that opening weekend's going to have a ton of upsets, though. And you don't want them to. You, you, want, you want the top three seats generally to win because it makes for a better second weekend by some margin if you've got, you know, you don't want to have a 15 seed in the second weekend, the way that Creighton, you know, hammered Princeton last year. That's no fun. That's, you want good teams in that second weekend. Yep. Uh, Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald is with us. Okay, uh, so this morning, Matt Rule popped in. Um, Matt Rule, the new, um, he's he, he's basically the interim athletic director at this point. I know that the title belongs to Dennis LeBlanc, but he kind of gets to, he gets the big voice um, and he's the face of the athletic department at this point. Like, what it, do you feel like he he maybe calmed the waters a little bit this morning because the, I mean the the Trev the Trev hatred stuff is has gotten pretty wild. I don't know that 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 burn is going to go away anytime soon. But rule sort of um, you know he projected confidence about the future of what's going to happen here. No question, I expected that from him. Uh, it, I'm not surprised in the least that he. Give it. I mean, he had five days to think about it. Um, I knew he would probably come. That's why I wrote what I wrote last week. I mean, I said, you know, Oscar Nation turns its hopeful eyes to him. Uh, and I, I said, you know, he's the face of the athletic department now. And I think he knew that going into it. And he, you know, he went up there and he said, he said strong things. I think he laid out exactly the kind of AD that, that he thinks they should get. Somebody who's willing to take risks. Somebody who's you know, willing to invest money. Uh, this is the time to make the hires and do all the hard things. And, um, you know, I thought he set a really good tone and probably set a tone for a lot of the coaches in that department, uh, who, who are like, who's going to lead this thing, you know, and, and, and Dennis LeBlanc, I think is going to talk on the radio tonight, but that's not Dennis's role. Dennis isn't going to go down there and fire and brimstone. And he's not going to be Dave Remington from five years ago and Dave Remington comes in and it's like, you know, why don't we have a walk on program? And that's not <laughs> what Dennis is going to be there to do. So, yeah. yep. you know, that's rules job and, and, and everybody kind of knows what he brings to the table and as a communicator. And so I, I anticipated all that. I, um, and I didn't talk to rule before I anticipated that. I think that's just kind of his MO is that he's going to take, he's going to take leadership where there's a vacuum. Uh, so, you know, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's an intense guy. So, you know, CEO is more of a calming influence. I think rule gets you a little fired up. And so I think there were some people in media in the room. They're like, oh boy, yeah. You know, and that's, that's what, um, that's what he's good for. You do need somebody who's going to come in there and uh, they could use somebody who's going to come in who's intense and who, and he's a doer, but has the ability to maybe play, um, a little bit more of the, uh, you know, soft is the wrong word, calm. They they could use somebody that comes in and and is intense, but is able to kind of look at a level gaze and say, okay, we'll get you what you need. You know, like you go win games, we'll get you what you need. This thing's going in the right direction. Um, But, you know, they, they have, they. Sam. I didn't. I didn't hear the click yet, though. Maybe, maybe we'll hold on. We'll wait. We'll wait. There he goes. Hey, Sam. There you go. Sorry, we lost you for a second. I'm back. I'm driving through campus. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So on yeah. that idea, what, what kind of um, like spin? How, how similar do you think the next athletic director should be to what Trev Alberts kind of? vision was and what he was already kind of implementing and it laid the kind of seeds for as, as, as he leaves. Uh, I think you can have a similar um, desire to win and a similar desire to do those things. And I think rule will probably want somebody who's a little bit like that. Uh, but I think you can do that in a, in a, in a, um, in a personality trait that isn't necessarily, uh, you know, Trev's personality. But I asked, I asked Rue very specifically, I'm like, what kind of personality traits do you want to work for? And he was like, you know, 
incredibly urgent and, you know, unabashed. Like, he wants somebody to come in there who's going to be kind of a, you know, uh, it's going to have his back and it's going to have his back in a vocal way, a swashbuckler. Um, so you listen to that. You pay some attention to that. Um, I don't think they want somebody that's going to come in there and just not really pay much attention. I think they want somebody who's going to be intense, you know. But, uh, again, can you do that in a, in a, in a personality package? This may be a little different than, than what we, you know, what, what, what Trev was. I mean, Trev's a brilliant guy. And, and, and so he, you know, so at times I thought he kind of got uh, a little, like, caught up in stuff that you, some things you just can't change. And so I think rules a little bit like that, honestly. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, I mean, I, again, I, I like Trev a lot. I, I told him I will miss our conversations, and that was true. I think he's been a highly effective leader uh, in the two and a half years he was in the role. I, I think that's probably true of Rule as well. But here's the, th- here's the trait that I think is similar about him. They're a little impatient, you know, like, and, and Rule's impatient, and they, he needs to be. The football program needs to get better. And Trev was too, you know. I mean, he's, he left after two and a half years. Uh, I think he felt like, well, I set a vision in place and things weren't quite what I wanted it to be. And here's this other place over here. And so I think, you know, you got to get somebody in there who's got vision, but also can kind of, yeah. you know, stick in the saddle. Yeah. I got the sense that he was in, that Trev was, was impatient. I thought he would kind of, I thought he would direct that and, you know, sort of, it would lead to more urgency here and not that it didn't, but now he's not, we're, we're not like, I think where he ultimately directed that was his opportunity to, to take another job. Like that's one thing that I really didn't know about leading into last week. Maybe that's just, you know, something that I didn't know and everybody else did, but like his, his sort of um, wanted desire to, um, to, to maybe serve a, a bigger purpose, whether it's at the college football level or, or another job or take another stepping stone to get to that point. Like, I, I was sort of under the impression that he was kind of a lifer up until that happened. Were you? I was not, no. I, I didn't think it was going to be now, though. I, I thought I thought it was going to be, you know, three, four, five years down the line when when, when the, the stadium project is done. I, no, I thought he'd be a five- or six-year guy. I, that, that was my sense. Um, I just... And, and, and some of it is... Once he got into this role, you know, at UNO, I think he was kind of the guy and, and so overwhelmingly strong personality and smart in that environment that, like, everybody's just like, yeah, we're just going to do what Trev wants. He, he knows all the money people here in Omaha. That's what he's doing. Um, at Nebraska, you know, there's a bunch of people down there that have been around a long time who, have, who care about it, who are, you know, involved, invested. And they have their own ideas and their own their own worldviews and their own perspectives, and uh, you know they're 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 going to go about it their own way. So I always kind of thought it'd be like a five or six year deal, but but uh, and here it is now. And you know, as I wrote this morning, I, I I think on some level it's a wake up call. It's a wake up call to some of the people down there who are stakeholders of like you know uh, for many years Nebraska fired the people before they could walk out. And here's a guy that was successful there and people wanted to stay. Yep. And he said, no, nah, I'm going to go. And that's, you know, that's like the moment where the guy goes into his house and his wife's taking the suitcase and she's gone. <laughs> You're like, what, what did I do? Moment. Yeah. That's a sobering moment. Like you, you, you better, you better take a breath and think, okay, now Ted Carter left and we liked him. Trev Alberts left and we liked him. We all kind of like Matt Rule, and by we, I mean the people who are stakeholders. What, what do we need to do to make sure that this ends here? And again, Rule's not going to say anything other than what he said. To be clear, you know, he's going to say exactly what he said, and and of course that's all true. But Nebraska needs to respond in kind and and understand that, like, if you're going to go into this universe, and this is a challenging thing going forward. If you're going to go into this universe of high, high, high-level college athletics, the money people need to be aligned. They need to be on board, yeah. and they need to, and, you, and the stakeholders do too. And let me say this one more additional thing: Tom Osborne was a guy that always did more with less, 
And on some level, Tom, like, kind of took that. You know what I mean? He always kind of, you know, he was the guy that, you know, probably did it a little bit more on the cheap with guys that were willing to do it with him. And, and maybe they didn't have the highest price assistance or, or whatever. And that was in the old Big 8 and in the early Big 12. And that's not what this is going to be. The Big 10 is a money link. And Nebraska has to accept it and understand it. And understand that if they want to continue to hold on to Matt Rules, there's things they're going to have to do. And, uh, you know, Matt Rules is an East Coast guy. You know, so there's things you're going to have to do. And if they're prepared to do those things, I think they're going to be in good shape. But right. this is a wake-up call moment. Wake-up call. I right. think I think what you're getting at maybe is, does that mean giving him a voice in, in the search for, for his boss? Uh, sure. I think they're going to give him that anyway. That, that's already that's already baked into the cake. Uh, he'll have that. I think it's more. Um, he can't put a bunch of can't can't make things hard where they don't need to be hard. Uh, can't run into a situation, and, and I'm in management too, so like I understand some of these things in a different way, on a much smaller smaller scale, but like. This, this can't turn into, well, you know, you, you and O want this. So yeah, I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that. Or, well, you know, I mean. Or the Big Ten, other Play, playing ball with the Big Ten and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you can't, can't get into that. Like, you can't, can't do it. it. It can't be part of the conversation. Like, you got to get back in the AU for one thing. Got to figure out a way to do that. Again, I'm I'm not saying that I'm advocating this. I'm saying this is the framework by which people should think about this. This, this can't be a, uh, and that's one of the challenges that I think the university will have to address as it moves forward. Is like, you know, um, the university, the state has always really supported public education, including at the collegiate level. People can look at other states and they can see the level of commitment um, at some of those other states and, and compare that to Nebraska if they're if they're in the mood to pretend that Nebraska doesn't support their universities. Um, going forward, you're going to have to make, you know, some, some harder conversations about, uh, well, do we need to have this, this, and this, and that, that, and that. And, 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 and under no circumstances can we compromise the University of Nebraska Athletic Department is competing against Michigan and Ohio State. And if you think that, you know, Michigan, oh, there are no obstacles at Ohio State. I don't know about Michigan. I don't, that's a strange place, but um, there there aren't many there. Well, and, what he what he and, said today was we, we we cannot care about optics, right? We can we cannot right. care about how stuff looks, and and I think what he's talking about is probably where you know a, a bigger picture where Nebraska's you know support and 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 ultimately probably money goes, right? Correct. Yes. Like it. it this it, this has got to be one of those. Yes. I mean, for sure, it, it can't turn into, well, what what are we doing over here, and who who will this upset? Um, will this upset? Like, who will this upset as it relates to, um, you know, this person's initiative or that person's initiative? And I'll tell you what, in my job, for example, when we talk about how we cover teams and sports at the World Herald or whatever, I talk about these things called public utility, and the public utility is the kind of thing that you really can't, um, you can't do it out, right? So, like, if we stopped covering Nebraska football, people would notice, like, right away. Like, we just stopped going to Nebraska volleyball matches. We, you know, obviously share with Husker Extra, um, you know, the journey to be right or down there. But if we just stopped going, people are like, what are you doing? Yeah. If we just stopped going to Nebraska women's basketball, Nebraska women's basketball, or Creighton basketball, you know, people would be like, why are you stopping covering this stuff? Um, those are public utilities. Like if you shut them off, people notice like right away because they don't have heat or light. Not everything is a public utility, right? Not everything is. And so one of the challenges that I would have in my job, as an example, is explaining to people who personally care about X, Y, or Z. What, 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 our, what our market says or what we say, what you, what you care about is important to you. But it cannot necessarily be our priority. The solution cannot be all. And sometimes I think within any organization, including the university system, 
there's a feeling that the solution has to be all because if it's not all, then someone will be upset. And that, and this is part of how we, you get to where they're at. You have to prioritize Mm -hmm. and priorities mean making choices. Those aren't easy to make all the time. And I think that rule has got to be a very, very high priority. There's other things. I mean, UNMC is certainly a high priority as a shining star on the station, you know, that is Nebraska university of Nebraska, but like you can't, you can't, everything can't be equally important yeah. because there's equal passion. Equal passion doesn't necessarily mean it's I, true. And that, that can be challenging for people to navigate. But the thing, Sam, about Trev was he had the institutional knowledge and he, he kind of understood. And, and, and I don't think he was necessarily afraid to, 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 you know, piss people off or make people mad or whatever it was, but he kind of had the equity where he felt like maybe he could do some of those things. And so the, and that's, that's what Nebraska is losing right now in that seat, which I feel like is a pretty significant deal. Yes. I mean, to, to some degree, I think, I think that's true. Um, you know, they're losing some of that, uh, you know, that, that, that's part of the, that's part of the challenge. And, and, but you can get an athletic director in there who might be advantaged in the way of like, they don't know what they don't know. Right. They, they, they're not, they're not privy to anything. And so they have to go in and, and they have to learn people and they make their own relationships. And, and, uh, I don't think anybody, you know, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of uh, rivalries or personal rivalries or any of those things built up or, you know, Scott Frost had to deal with this too. You know, when Scott got back, Scott kind of knew, knew the landscape and he knew all the former players and this and that. And one of the, one of the, that, that can be a good thing, but it can also be a real bad thing. Yeah. It's like, well, you kind of know where all the, you know, where, you know, where all your rivals are. Are you using it to your advantage or are you using it to the school's advantage or the greater goods advantage? Yes, for sure. And I, I, I've never felt like Scott got on the other side of that. I think that was like something that actually held it back is that there was just too much concern over. Um, and, and so part of, I think that's part of what's happened in Nebraska. It's just things turn in, in, you know, in, in on itself a little bit. And Trev's going to go to a place where he doesn't really know anybody. And that'll probably be an advantage in some ways. And, um, you know, you, you have to try to figure out a way to work uh, work together. And, but, you know, Nebraska's got to get all the stakeholders, and that's not just regions. That's a bunch of people in the room and, and say, okay, like, what are our priorities? What's important to us? Um, what What is, you know, what, what, what do we value? And then stick to that. Like, not, well, we value this today because we like this person, and then, you know, in six months we will value something else because this person complained and, you know, we're constantly responding or respondent instead of, uh, you know, ahead of the game. So, you know, like they've got to get to a point where they, A, have a vision and then B, you know, they kind of stick to it. And I think, you know, part of Trev's departure is just related to whatever the vision was in 2021 or 2022. It was wavering a little bit once Carter left and, you know, there's people who are like, actually, I want to do this. And I want to, I want, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want a stadium expansion. We'll never know, Connor, uh, if, if the stadium expansion, if, if Trev had come up with a much more modest vision of like, hey, we're going to keep South Stadium as it is, but we're just going to put seat backs in there and kind of make it nice and whatever. If he, if he had gone with that vision, um, maybe, you know, maybe some of this conversation doesn't happen, but he went with the $450 million. Let's mm-hmm. tear down South Stadium and let's let's rethink the entire concept vision. And I think that's just a little daunting to people. I yeah. think it's like, oh wow, okay, well, you know, we just built this, we just built this, and you know, he's a dreamer. He, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that was that was always going to be what he was going to introduce. You know, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I'm rambling because I mean, we we had a lot obviously to cover in the last week, and it's, it's not over, but just trying to download some of the key, the key concepts of like, it's very basic stuff. Like you you, you get a piece of paper out, you make a list and then you, you're like, here are the things that we're going to be about. And, you know, in, in in managing uh, 
at a job, in family, in, in church, in anywhere in life. It's one of the hardest things to do is to decide what you're going to be about and then be about it. Because almost invariably, what I've found in my own experience is one of the hardest things you can do is tell somebody to stop doing something and, and do something else. Not even telling them to do a new thing, but stop doing an old thing. And they don't want to stop. And so like all the things that become true, it can be hard to change ideological course. And what Matt Rule's trying to do with that football program is he's absolutely trying to change that. And he's going to need obstacles to be removed as he does it. And Nebraska will have to decide how important that is. Yep. Yep, no doubt about it. Uh, Sam, well done. Uh, good stuff, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, take care. Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. There's a lot wrapped in there. There was a lot wrapped in there. Um, come back. We we gotta we gotta take a break because we're like significantly behind. Uh, so a couple things to wrap up. Maybe a little bit on that. Josh just sent me a nerd chart, which is exciting. Very. And uh, poll questions. Tell you what to watch. All to come on Connor Happer Show on sixteen twenty the zone. I'm a fabulous driver. The Connor Happer Show. I'm one of the best friends you can ever have in your life. On 1620, The Zone. I hate you. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620, The Zone. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks jm displays wants you help shoot an omaha storm chasers game memorial park display or any of the major shows in western iowa and all of nebraska if you like to travel jm covers nebraska kansas and most of missouri they offer free training and great daily pay rates which makes it a perfect part-time job visit jm displays.com and click the join our team tab to find out more jm fireworks at Charmin, we heard you shouldn't talk about going to the bathroom in public, so we decided to sing about it. When you're rolling Charmin, don't you stop on the party. This is more, so roll it back, everybody. Charmin Ultra Soft is irresistibly soft and more absorbent, so you can use less. Enjoy the go with Charmin. Discover, this is Daniela. Hi, it's Jennifer Coolidge. I just want to thank you for making me feel so special. I earned cash back on debit for my dinner party groceries. That's great. But with Discover Cashback Debit, we give everyone cash back on everyday purchases. Anything else I can help you with? Do you like asparagus and mushroom sorbet? I've got leftovers. Introducing Discover Cashback Debit, a checking account with cash back. It pays to discover. Eligibility in terms at discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. Email any of our shows anytime into the Equitable Bank inbox. At Equitable, we take banking personally. For me, John at 1620thezone.com. The Equitable Bank inbox from 1620 The Zone. Lindley Clothing in Omaha has been the premier provider of men's fashion for over 88 years, from suits to jeans with great brands like Jack Victor, Bugatti, Peter Millar. Your father was a customer. You're a customer. Your son is a customer, and now they're looking for the latest sportswear to tailored clothing. Lindley Clothing has you covered. They will help you get the look that you need with their selection and top-notch customer service. You walk in the door, and there's John and Marlene and the entire Lindley Clothing team with a great smile on their face, and they're to help you. 132nd and West Dodge in Linden Market to pick up the latest styles and enjoy easy access shopping. Velocity Clinical Research in Omaha frequently conducts clinical trials for a broad range of investigational treatments. Typical studies involve medications for high cholesterol, diabetes, infectious diseases, and others. They also perform vaccine studies for people of all ages, conducting innovative research that has a positive impact on lives. Click for current trials at velocityclinicaltrials.com. More trials are launching in March. Compensation for study-related time and travel. Find out more at velocityclinicaltrials.com. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. 
If you're a decision maker, adding RAM could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join RAM. Just go to RAM.com slash sports. RAM.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circus Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. Are you a delivery driver looking for a better job opportunity? Post Coffee is a local family-owned coffee, water, and vending company that has been in business since 1972. We are growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit hostcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Post Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Riding season is here, and it's time to trade in and trade up. Or, if you ain't riding it, Lus Hills Harley-Davidson is buying it. Sell your Harley-Davidson today. Lus Hills Harley-Davidson. Rise up and ride on. Let's get back to the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Here comes the clown. All right, quick one here. We might have a couple minutes to dive into some of the things that Sam said tomorrow that is um, going to be very difficult to do in 10 seconds or 30 seconds or two minutes. We're going to need more on that. So instead, we have a uh, nerd graphic. Nerd graphics have never been bigger than right now. These days, when you are picking your bracket, everybody claims to have the solution to all of your bracket problems. And not that our friends over at Shot Quality are doing this in this situation, but a a well-placed graphic, if you're already feeling one way or the other, can definitely sway how you're going to fill things out in front of your beautiful blank official bracket. So um, have you ever heard the term, it's a... uh, it's a make shot miss shot game, Josh. I have, yes, I know ball. It's a it's a make shot miss shot, uh, you know, situation. So we're talking about offensive, you know, basically efficiency here. Um, do you take good shots? Is question A. And do you make shots? Period. Is question B. Caitlin Clark takes bad shots but makes them. That's true. She would go, why don't you retweet this, Josh? Mm -hmm. She would go in the bottom right quadrant of this graphic. Bad shots, but makes them. Who do you think's in that quadrant of our local teams, Josh? Maybe the team that has Keisei Tominaga on it? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 By the way, my Casey Tominaga should be bench take as being completely twisted. All thanks to shock jock in Lincoln, Jack Mitchell, who keeps <laughs> perpetuating the idea that I said, let's bench Casey. What all I said was I am not really willing to wait around for him to just like shoot himself back into a good run. He did it like the wow. next game. Meanwhile, well, I can't. But basically what I said is if he's missing shots, you can't play him. Meanwhile, you're saying that and getting flamed. I'm the mascot for Nebraska ball and desperately trying to get down to Memphis to watch my team play. Interesting. Interesting dichotomy. Life comes at you fast. 
Um, by the way, just quick sidebar. We do have our winner for the grand prize of the Vegas oh. watch party. I will not say. I will not say. Oh, okay. I'm okay. looking at it right now. Oh. But so I hold I your closed secrets. my email. We'll find a way to we'll find a way to announce this at some point. Uh in a creative way today. Uh, but yes, we that's exciting. Anyway, so bottom right quadrant. That means you're taking some bad shots, but you're making you're making them, right? You're making shots. So shot selection, shot making is your X and Y axis. Texas A&M, for the record, um, they take good shots. Pretty good at taking good shots. Pretty bad at making shots, oh, just no. in general. Have you, by the way, have you looked at... I, I tried to get a brief overview on, on Texas A&M last night, our, our friends over at Texas A&M. Um, of course, with Athletic Director Trev Alberts. So, like... It turns out that their offensive efficiency is okay. Like their adjusted efficiency offensively is is fine. But their tempo is super slow. Yeah. Um they do get a lot of opportunities because of their offensive rebounds, but they just they they just don't have very many good They are 353rd in the country in three-point shooting percentage. They don't make threes. That's a lot. They do not make threes. And they're also 301st in the country in two point percentage. Now, that can be misleading because of how many offensive rebounds they get. They just get more opportunities than most teams, especially at the pace that they run. But mostly, their offense is a stinky, a bit, a bit, a bit <laughs> stinky. They got a couple decent three point shooters. Not really much to write home about in that category. Anyway, they are in the category of good shots. Don't make them. You'll see a couple standouts on this list. One of them, the one that stands out the most, is, of course, the Creighton Blue Jays. Why is that, Connor? Because they take good shots and they make them. Now, they don't make them at a high enough... they, they They don't take them. Gosh, it, just with my eyes, I would tell you that they don't make them at a high enough rate for how many they take. But the graphic says the opposite. But either way, I mean, these if, if you're looking for long-term plays in the NCAA tournament, obviously you can look to these graphics, the nerd graphics. Josh just retweeted it at Happer Show. It's out there for you. If you're looking for a long-term play, this is another reason why Creighton can win the national championship. Creighton's, right? Creighton's on an island. Like There's yes. no one near them. This is not to say they're impervious to upset ability. Right. All right. So that can be hard. Quick timeout. Pull questions. Tell you what to watch on the other side on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Bright skies for your Monday afternoon with temperatures remaining a little bit chilly with a high today in Omaha 43, but mainly feeling like the 30s. Northerly winds possible up to about 15 to 20 miles an hour with very high fire danger for parts of eastern Nebraska and western Iowa. Clear skies stick around tonight. Cold with a low of 32. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. More with Connor and Josh after this. We're going to have an extensive professional relationship, my man. On 1620, The Zone. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees, The Source, by your mom's house. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, 
We take banking personally. Member FDIC. College basketball's biggest tournament is coming, and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa. It's sports betting the way it should be. High betting limits, tight money line splits, exceptional customer service, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all of the March action at CircusSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling? Call 1-800-238-7633. At Charmin, we heard you shouldn't talk about going to the bathroom in public, so we decided to sing about it. When you're rolling Charmin, don't you stop on the party. This is more, so roll it back, everybody. Charmin Ultrasoft is irresistibly soft and more absorbent, so you can use less. Enjoy the go with Charmin. And Doug. To celebrate everyone who's customized and saved hundreds on car insurance with Liberty Mutual, we got a saving siren that goes off every time someone saves. There it is. It's a really more savings, which really. Okay, a lot of savings. A little annoying now. Will you stop saving for five seconds? Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Savings may vary and written by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company and affiliates excludes Massachusetts. Liberty, 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 Liberty. If you're unhappy with your job or employer and you've hit a dead end, it's time to start your new career as a delivery driver with Host Coffee. Our local family-owned business is growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit hostcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Is your concrete cracked or uneven? Hey, everyone. Coach Greg McDermott here to explain why you should choose EverLevel Concrete Repair. Many people think they need to replace broken concrete, but repairing it provides durable protection and comes at a fraction of the cost. EverLevel provides permanent repair solutions to fix your concrete and protect it against future damage. And it all comes with a long-term transferable warranty. They offer free inspections to walk you through the entire process. Call EverLevel Concrete Repair today. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Woodhouse GMC is bringing you more for the new year. With every new GMC purchase from Woodhouse, we're including three years of scheduled maintenance. Plus, with our current lease offers going on now, you'll save even more. Lease a 2024 GMC Terrain SLE for $389 a month for 39 months, 10,000 miles per year. Woodhouse GMC, we are professional grade. With approved credit, must finance with GM Financial. Must currently lease a 219 or newer GM vehicle to qualify. $1,995 down payment and first payment plus $299 dock fee due at signing. Offer expires April 1st, 2024. See dealer for details. All right, welcome back, Connor Amper, Josh Hudson with you. Um, let's get to the poll questions. Did we have any today? We had one. I feel like we've just kind of been all over the place today. If we had any really succinct topics today, not really. Bracket. It's more like here, bracket. It exists. Texas A&M, Trev. Who you got? Uh, okay. So let's take a look. Let's see what we came up with today in our random musings. Does Zip Nation always show out? There's one thing I know. That's it. <laughs> Zip Nation always shows out. Every single time. So you know they're going to be there when Creighton has to play a road game as a three seed in the NCAA tournament. It's really despicable. Did the NCAA what they've done. do a disservice to Creighton? Well, on top of not allowing them to play at their home 
Jim right. for some random reason. Mm. But being fine with Nebraska playing there. Sure. Even though we didn't get to that point. Uh, yes, 54%. Zip Nation always shows out. And that's it. That's it? That's fine. Mm-hmm. We didn't really do anything stupid today. Just stupid takes. All business. Get Josh to Memphis. And what are we watching today? We're watching the NBA doubleheader on ESPN 630 tip between the Heat and the Sixers. Followed at 9 o'clock by the Knicks and the Warriors. Here's my NHL take. Just a two-game slate today in a league that needs eyeballs. Not a lot going on in the sports calendar today. Feels like another missed opportunity for the league. Only one of those games on television, and it is on NHL Network. It is the Washington Capitals and the Calgary Flames, Connor's former love. Why do they not? You make a good point, Josh. This is now twice where they've just declined yeah. to take a day all to themselves. Yeah, like they could have done one of those. Hey, everybody's playing at the same time. Tune into ESPN Plus and we'll yeah. give you quad boxes all night long. But they they didn't. Uh, just two games today. 7.30 puck drop there. Uh, documentary on Peacock. Connor, you might be interested in this one. It's called Stormy. Adult film star Stormy Daniels shares her story. That's the log line. I wonder story. what it's about. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe on ABC at 7 o'clock, you'll be uh, tuning into an Oprah special, colon, Blame and the Weight Loss Revolution. Oprah Winfrey hosts a sit-down to discuss obesity and prescription weight loss medication with medical experts and people who have taken those drugs. Yeah, so I guess Oprah's kind of like back, she's getting back out there. Yeah, she's uh, she showed up on water. Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, she lost a bunch of weight. She said, it. Uh, I have to leave Weight Watchers because it was not through Weight Watchers that I lost all this weight. It was an Ozempic-like product or that exact one, not mm. sure. Uh, now, after that, I know the Happer House will be tuned into... Uh, the Bachelor, Women Tell All. Yep. The women give updates and share behind the scenes secrets ahead of next week's final rose ceremony. I honestly I think I probably will watch this tonight because I will I'm not really seeing my wife much in the in the next three weeks. So poll question. It might are, you, be, are you ignoring your are wife? you ignoring your spouse yet again? Yet again. Yes. But not purposefully. No. Nope. It's just the right confluence. He's of things. busy. Yes. That's it. That's it. Thanks, Josh. Thank you, Connor. That is the show. If you missed anything, 1620thezone.com is where you can find it. The crossover is next. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. Did you know when you shop Salvation Army thrift stores in the metro area, you're helping people in need right here in the community. Proceeds from our thrift stores go into our metro area social services, supporting everything from food and housing programs to behavioral health and more. So stop by, get a great deal, and make a big difference for people in need. For a list of store locations, just go to SalArmyOmaha.org. That's SalArmyOmaha.org. When you wake up well-rested on a great mattress, everything becomes clear. Wow, I'm a morning person. Things you missed when you were tired finally reveal themselves. I should not use a chatbot to write my wedding vows. This is your official invite to Mattress Firm's Friends and Family Sale. Save up to $700 with the Friends and Family discount. Plus, get a free adjustable base with select Sealy mattresses. See a lower price? We'll match it. The right mattress matters. We'll find yours. Restrictions apply. See store website for details. Yeah. Mm-hmm.